play. Yeah, for sure. I'm happy with um, with the performance, especially you know how I used the important moments um, at the end of first and second set. And yeah, it's never easy to play first match on any uh, stadium, and here especially because of because the conditions are a little bit more tricky. So I'm happy that I'm through. Congrats. Thank you. You mentioned on court that uh, Southern California Indian Wells was a little overwhelming for you at first when you were a new player. And now you've gotten kind of comfortable here. I just wonder if you could elaborate a little bit and talk about what you've come to like about this place and maybe what are maybe the place that you look forward to going to more than any than any other. And if, if so, for what reason? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, here we always spend a lot of time here because uh, we're getting here earlier to you know have a jet lag basically. So um, yeah, when I was younger, I just you know I felt overwhelmed by the you know, all these fans and, you know, the courts are so big, even though it's not a Grand Slam, so, um, and everybody is kind of more motivated and more, more pumped to practice. Um, so at first I felt that, but now I just take a lot of positive energy from everything that's going on. You know, the tournament is taking care of us really nicely and, um, and I don't know, I feel more comfortable kind of everywhere because I just grew up and I got more experienced. So, um, you know, it's always nice to also come back to, to a place where you already won a tournament. Here we go, right here. Yeah. Um, I, you seem to be a very steady from players you played before and pushing players who pushed you. Do you learn a lot when you this player that pushes you and you try and improve that sort of um, head-to-head? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, we try to watch and analyze and uh, since I started you know working with my coach um, the one I'm working with right now Tomasz Viktorowski he's he has a really good eye and really good perspective on tennis and um, when we started watching matches I just felt um, like I can learn tactically much much more and then use it um, on court so I remember having a few players that I didn't like playing against and then I started to, you know, be more comfortable and uh, win against them. So, uh, yeah, for sure, his help um, is a lot. Hi. Um, in the past, you said one of the things you learned is in the long process of the tennis year to play well when you're not necessarily feeling that well, tired, or just out of sorts. Could you just talk about how you perform, how you manage to perform well when you're not feeling well? Well, honestly, there are different reasons, so you have to react differently and find different solutions. Um, uh, I, I think most of players would tell you that they they don't feel comfortable most of the time. They only have like probably I don't know if they have five tournaments per year where they feel you know great. Um, that's a lot, you know. So. Um, so yeah, you have to just kind of don't panic and um, and take it step by step because I already had plenty of tournaments where I didn't play well, you know, during the first matches, and then I was able to um, change my game and adjust a little bit more, um, so I could win titles, you know. So this gave me a little bit more perspective, and um, it showed me that I shouldn't you know, judge too early my game, even though I may not, you know, play so well or feel comfortable. 
and for sure this kind of approach helps to you know find these solutions and and um, and actually problem solve. How hard do you find this part of the season, Eva, given that there were the two back-to-back -back 1,000 events in the Middle East and then a week off, and then two more back-to-back -back 1,000 events? Well, you know, for me the for me the um, what kind of tournament that is, it doesn't really matter. But for sure, I think. Being in India was brings a little bit to the top players. They have much more, you know, things to do, and there are always, you know, sponsor shoots and stuff like that. So I would say, um, you know, switching from being in Middle East where everything is so like peaceful, you're just focusing on tennis and that's it, and you have kind of the same rhythm every day because you only they're they're starting the matches pretty late there, and we only have WTAs. So uh, the schedule is pretty smooth, and then going here where there's so much fuss, you know, um, I think this is pretty tricky. But um, but I know this place already, so um, so it's not a problem for me. And it's the intensity is just just tough. But but on the other hand, I'm one of these players that can kind of cope physically, and so that doesn't worry me as well. You mentioned that you like it here, you feel comfortable here, you, the courts are so big, even though it's kind of slam. Do you have a mental, a, a list in your head of the tournaments that you want to win that are outside the slams? And do you rank them in a certain way? And what, what is most important to you outside um, of the slams in particular tournaments? I don't have that kind of list. Um, Probably because I, when I start the season, I don't think about actually like winning titles. I think about you know just working and getting my game together. Um, so no, uh, for me, for me, yeah, I don't really. I for me, it doesn't really matter if I win, you know, Doha or I win Indian Wells or Montreal or Cincinnati. Like tournament is a tournament. I want to win every tournament I play at. So yeah, it doesn't matter. Did you enjoy the process of sitting down with Tomas, as you said, watching video, breaking down your opponents? Um, and are there some things that you learned from the video that maybe you didn't even feel during the match? Yeah, there are, there are um, plenty of situations where I can see that, oh, I thought I did this differently or something like that. Um, but yeah, some, yeah, usually it's, it's just a learning process and I like it uh, but sometimes obviously we have to watch these matches that didn't go well you know so it's not, not nice to see like yourself you know in troubles but um, it's necessary to learn so so it's part of the job that's all. Okay. You're just saying about you know the main list of I want to win this tournament or that tournament etc but do you at the beginning of the year do you set an end goal of what is the, the main achievement that, that you want? Honestly, last couple of years, um, they kind of messed with my head that way that, you know, I achieved much more than I ever expected, you know, so um, making goals that are based on the results, it's pretty tricky for me because honestly, just doing, I don't know, two tournaments per year would be, you know, all I ever dreamed of, honestly, and even more. So I'm trying to set my goals, you know, for more kind of te technical stuff, like, you know, working on my serve and actually being more comfortable at the net and stuff like that, you know. So um, it's not tournament related, it's more proce process related. And I think that's also, you know, how, ki how Daria kind of pushed me in that direction. So. I think these goals are kind of healthier. Have you, in one sense, then, have you surprised yourself with what you've done? Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. See you. Have a good day.
If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis. Well, hello there and welcome back to Talking Tennis at Indian Wells. Um, and we are back covering everything from the sunny desert in California. And it's our usual, it's our usual duo of myself and Shrihari. Shrihari, how are you doing? Um, yeah, this isn't, this isn't the match we were expecting to do. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but too bad we're not really surprised uh, about the withdrawal. But yeah, in any case, I'm doing well. How about you? Oh, I'm doing great, thanks. Um, I just need to switch my stream over because for some reason the stream I'm watching is not the match we're supposed to be doing. Um, it said I'm being shown... Uh... Oh, no, wait, they are moving over. I don't know what's going on, but they were showing me the Coco Goff match um, and the players warming up on there rather than the match that we're supposed to be covering here, which is Diana Ostramska and Emma Raducanu, which is what um, I'm going to be watching um, at the minute. Um, but yeah... I know you say it's not surprising that uh, um, Matt Rinos Raonic has withdrawn and it looked like his leg was heavily taped. But um, yeah, thoughts on kind of, yeah, the situation on Ra for Raonic and any positives he can take from this? I don't know. Uh, well, he, I, I, I know what to feel about him playing Nadal in the first round even though I pick Rafa, but maybe a bit of uh, uh, reprieve for him that he instead drew Sumit Nago instead of Nadal, who had to withdraw, got that win. But um, yeah, uh, I don't I don't know what exactly he could take from this. Um, and I'm not sure how long he really has left either because he's also hinted a few times that uh, he's nearing the end of his career. Uh, so yeah, maybe we could think about what he could have taken away from this run had he made the third round or fourth round. But yeah, he did win a match and he withdrew. Uh, yeah, he has been retiring or withdrawing quite a bit since returning to the tour last year. So yeah, um, at this moment, yeah, I guess it's just unfortunate that he had to withdraw. But you know, it's something that has been happening. So for that reason alone, I'm not too surprised. Yeah, it's not a surprise. I mean, we can add his. It means we can add his name to the list of ATP players that were probably losing at the end of the year, along with the Dahl, Murray, and uh, Schwartzman. Um, 
I know we mentioned Dominic Team um, before, but I'm highly sceptical he's going to call it quits just yet. Um, mm. But uh, yeah, so something to keep an eye on. But yeah, it's going to be something that um, we're fully fit. Hello, Damien. Hello, hello. Um, we were just discussing um, the situation that obviously we were meant to be covering the you know, Australian against Holgaruna, um, and the match isn't going ahead, sadly. Um, and um yeah whether we thought this would be the beginning of the end for Milos Raonic I mean I don't want to be sending anyone into retirement but like there will be a time soon and in fact for Milos I mean it's probably happened already uh, at least a few times there will be a moment when he has to ask himself like whether this is all worth it right because well he's played three events this year and um neither of them he finished in good physical shape so mm. And even I don't, don't even even finish the event. I don't think he's had a match yeah. point converted against him, has he? I mean, retirement, retirement, and um, and a walkover, yeah. Mm. So instead, the match um, that we'll be focusing on will be Diana Nostromska against Amaradu Kanu, um, two highly talented, if streaky, players, um, and it'll be interesting to see uh, how this one plays out. Um, I mean, I know it's probably not the matches you're going to be focusing on, but I still want to, uh, before we hear about those, I want to hear your both your thoughts on um, how you see this one playing out. We'll start with you, Shahari. Um, yeah, I don't... Uh, it, uh, like I mentioned the last time, it's really hard to predict at the moment what to expect from Radu Kano, So, uh, And I think Yastromska as well, like you mentioned, pretty streaky and... Uh, Someone who was not for the same reason, but for why she was out. Um, you know, I think she she received a doping ban and she came back. Um, and obviously, Radu Khan underwent you know three surgeries uh, not very long ago. So yeah, for me, um, yeah, Emma, I think she played decently well in the last match. You you know, even though there were quite a few double faults and quite a few times that she got broken. Um, but again. Um, uh, we did mention that uh, these conditions may not be may not best suit her game, her play style. Um, so, yeah, I, I I I'm not expecting anything particularly. But um, if you know if she comes through, I think um, you know it would actually be a pretty good uh, showing, making it at least the third round at Indian Wells. Yeah, I mean, to me, like, this is kind of a match where, like, Emma can win, sure, everything it will be okay, but if she if she wins, it's nothing, you know, nothing insane. It's going to be all about that third round of Sabalenka if she gets through. And in a way, she can kind of do the Kinvan Zheng here and, you know, beat uh, Jastremska and lose, Sab lose to Sabalenka, like, at the Australian Open. And um, this is maybe more so what I, what I will be watching out for, like, because Jastremska is kind of like a mini version of Sabalenka in terms of the play style. And um, at the Australian Open, we could already see in the semifinals against um, Jastremska for Kinven that she was going to struggle against Arena. So, like, you know, I'm going to be interested in that if Raducanu wins and sort of to, to have an early checkup of how she can potentially perform against Sabalenka if it is Sabalenka in the third round. But yeah, all in all, I don't really like the matchup for her too much. I mean, she kind of falls into the same maybe category as, as Kinven, whom I, who I just mentioned, where, like, if you completely take the first strike away from her and you just hit so huge of both wings she might kind of be in trouble now whether Yastremska actually has enough consistency to win that's kind of well uh, this is definitely yeah. a bit unknown as she does tend to be very strict indeed it could be a messy match um i'm not I'm, I'm expecting there to be a lot of errors um from both um maybe they'll pleasantly surprise me because we both we, we know how good their a games can be um, but yeah, I'm, I think with the way they've kind of been playing at the minute, it wouldn't surprise me if it was a, a scrappy match. I mean, uh, Damien, I mean, you're, so you're talking about sort of how, what it might mean for Emma as a read for the Sabalenka matchup. Um, what's kind of in this match for Diana Yastremska? Well, trying to follow up that Australian Open run, right? I mean, that's that's also pretty huge, I think, because obviously, since she's picked up a few wins, but she hasn't been amazing. I mean, I, I think this year it's kind of like everything is fine after that Australian Open round where, like, yeah. you know, she's basically done her job for the entire year. And if she manages to get more, it's just going to be an, uh, an added bonus. 
Uh, it's kind of like Magdalenette last year, where like she she was pretty awful for the rest of the season, but it really didn't matter. Like she still stayed around the top twenty. She still sort of kept her in the seeding ranges for the slams and 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 WTA one thousand. So that's kind of where Estremska is at the moment. And of course, she's only had like two um, two yeah two wins since since Australia. So I guess the big one for her here is like. Yeah, just trying to um, show us that she's not going to be a one-time wonder this year. I mean, I think there's hopes for her. She's been a little bit more consistent now um, since she uh, since that Australian Open. I think she's she's got a few more wins than uh, she might have done in previous years. Um, so, and certainly compared to Lynette, maybe more promising signs. Um, so we'll see. They are look just practicing at the minute. No, I'm just thinking if there there were any promising signs after Australia. I mean, I I do think that she has a better shot than Lynette at like establishing herself around the top thirty, but I don't think she's really done anything since the Australian Open, and uh, some of the losses were pretty brutal as well. Um, I'm gonna just quickly round up the WTA matches, and sure here I'm gonna come to you to talk to us about what ATP matches are happening. Um, but we've got Clara Burrell playing Coco Golf on Stadium One. Diane Parry and Leila Fernandez are warming up on Stadium 6. Alina Kalina and Lucia Bronzetti have just got underway. And Ossian Dodan has literally broken Daria Kasatkina in the opening game of their match on Stadium 9. But surely, yeah, what's the ATP got on offer for us as this match is getting underway? These, these Just the opening matches. Yeah, we have Nori and Sonigo, I think, on Stadium uh, 3 or 4, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, stadium then yeah, uh, Mahach and uh, Manorino uh, as well so far. And uh, I, I do remember another, uh, yeah, and of course, yeah, Runa and Raonic are two I look forward to, but obviously that's not happening now because Raonic is withdrawn. Uh, but yeah, another match we will be covering, of course, uh, is Artur, Artur Fis against Alejandro Davidovich Fakina, which will be right after Manorino versus Mahach. You've missed out a, another a, ATP match that's happening on uh, on Stadium 4, which I think is the one that uh, Damien expressed the most interest yeah. in. <laughs> Precisely. Yeah. I, knew I, I, was I, was waiting, I was waiting for you to mention it. I just put it on. Um, watch the yeah, first I, I knew I was missing something. But anyway. Yeah, it's, I actually think that Kipson has a very good shot at the upset, so that's, that's why I'm excited by it. Uh, Umber on these courts that doesn't seem too amazing for me. There might be, you know, a bit of a low after that Dubai title. We'll see. But uh, yeah, I just feel like Kipson has really developed himself into a, a proper, let's say, you know, top 100, top 80 ish threat. And to me, that could be enough on on home soil as well to uh, battle with Hugo Umber here. So. I'm definitely excited about that one. Raoni Runa was like my first choice, yes. But after that, I think this one interests me the most. Maybe Mandarino Mahaj as well. But uh, but this one has like a better story for me if Kipson is actually going to uh, have a shot. So you're watching, um, just for the benefit of those who maybe weren't in our, our group chat, who is Patrick Kipson playing, Damien? Hugo Umber. Hugo Umber. Some people might not know this. Um uh, you might be stumbling across for the first time. Um, so, uh, so you've put on Kipson versus Umber, Damien. Um, Shahari, what have you got on? I have Manorino and Mahach. Okay, so we have got uh, for you today. We bring you mainstream WTA and niche ATP. Well, maybe I, not that. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I know you guys kind of laughed at it at the group chat that I went even more niche than what, that, than what Shihari uh, suggested. But it's kind of not niche. I mean, it's it's Ugo Mbeer. He won Dubai, you know, he won uh, Marseille. He won Mets. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. it's not cool. that niche. You are right in that sense, um, I guess, uh, in the sense of like, you know, there is a, main, a player who's well known. He's top 20 um, and you, and is the Dubai champion, two-time 500 champion, because he's also won Haller in previous years. Um, but he's... Uh, uh, but I guess it's more, you know, when you look at kind of big, big name clashes, um, you know, that's not necessarily who you would pick. As Amirad kind of hits a drop shot to break your Stremska in the opening game. A um, little bit of inconsistency from your Stremska, but that was a very, very well executed drop shot um, by Radu Kano taking advantage of your Stremska's court position. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, I guess, I would say that if you want to think about what a mainstream match in terms of very both players being recognizable you'd go with 
um, uh, Nori versus Sonigo. Mm -hmm. If you want to go for a very boring match, yes, <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Okay, to, to well, be fair, any match that Sonigo plays, not I don't, I wouldn't say is boring. Uh, he's pretty electric and you know he brings I would say people. any match that Sonego plays bores me <laughs> so <laughs> you know it's a matter of taste um Fair he, he kind of like to me I, I recently said something like that and, and it, it's harsh but I said something like oh, Sonego adds zero value to the tour <laughs> wow <laughs> of course wow. that's a bit of a stretch <laughs> yeah but let me like, just say that mathematically or just on paper he'll always have this stat which is he's handed Djokovic the heaviest defeat in his career. Nah. I mean, he's going to take that with, unless obviously Novak he's, loses in, in a, with a bigger uh, margin in the score line to someone else. He's always going to have that, right? So, Has he also had one sure. or two box office matches in Rome as well? Yep, in 2021. Sure. He he beat, uh, I remember he beat Team and Rublev back to back. And then Was took there Novak a Shapovalov match as well? The one where, the one where Dennis oh, yeah, screamed? Yeah, in 2022. At, uh, yep. Yeah, when he screams to the crowd, uh, shut up or something like that, or shut the... F up actually. Oh, was that that match? Was that who he was playing? Yes. yes. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, that's okay. That's interesting. Well, let's uh, let's say maybe we'll give Damien the chance to talk about a more interesting player then. So, um, for those of us who may not have seen um, Patrick Kipson before, um, mm -hmm. obviously he's twenty four years old. Um, you know, I've I've seen a few highlights of him. Not so, I've watched. I've not watched a full match. Of his, um, what's he? What's he like as a player? What's the draw with him? Um, I mean, over the past year or so, he's really improved the first serve and just allowing him to play like front foot tennis easily. He's kind of clean all around. Like I don't think he has the highest ceiling, but that ability to like yeah, just set up the point for himself so easily, I think it's been very impactful. And right now, he just kind of cracks the first forehand after it. You know, he goes to the net and then, yeah, just stays on top of the, of the point a lot more easily. I think the, the progress he's made is really pretty insane because, of course, he was the guy who won last year the um, USTA wildcard challenges for both the French and for Australia. And, like, for the French Open, he, 2023, and Australia 2024, so just to be clear, uh, for the French Open, he was like still the weakest player in the draw, essentially. He drew Radu Albot, I think, in the opening round and was, well, it wasn't a quality match, let's say that. Uh, why, where, whereas for Australia, he was like already a threat. You know, he, he pushes Rusevori, plays a great match there, is like unbreakable for a lot of the match. Um, but so, yeah, I mean, I'm just kind of um, expecting him to be very good as long as he can just keep doing that. I mean, play the, play, <laughs> serve great. He cracked the first forehand, and then he definitely has a has a shot for me. Assuming that Ugo Umber will not be able to like frustrate him too much with that flatter backhand and stuff, but on these courts, it shouldn't be a thing, really. All right. Well, um, that's going to be. I, I think that's going to be an interesting uh, dynamic then. So we'll see. You know, uh, there's a lot of unknowns in that match. Uh, Shrihari, um Obviously, we watched Mahach take out. Stan Wawrinka, uh, do you want to go? Uh, I would want to know what your thoughts on his chances are against uh, Manorino. Uh, yeah, well, first to give an update on the match, Manorino had a couple of break points at 1-0 on Mahach's serve, but Mahat saved them. And at love 15, he, I, which I think happened, I have it on mute, so I don't know uh, if uh, it was a fault or double fault by Manorino or if Mahach... Uh, hit this amazing backhand return winner with with a sick angle um cross court let's go with the yeah. sick let's go with the sick angle you know let's give the yeah, guy uh, credit right. <laughs> yeah no, yeah i hope i hope that's the case i don't know um, anyway <laughs> yeah but this is the first time they're playing each other and um i i would like mahach's chances because i mean i know that manorino is you know in the form of his life uh playing some of the best tennis you know in all of his career but I still um, like Mahach's chances because he is, he's been playing some really good tennis. He's just going to be much more solid from the baseline. Uh, I know that Manorino is going to mix things up. He's going to be un unorthodox. But if Mahach plays on his own terms, I think this is a match that he should be winning, in my opinion. And as we speak, he has a couple of break points uh, to go 2-1 up in this first set. Is it uh, fair to say that Manorino has kind of like, you know, can we already say that he's kind of dropped off this year? 
Like he just probably hasn't been yeah he yeah. has I mean yeah to be fair he made he beat Shelton to make the fourth round at the Australian Open but I know but yeah, it was you know we, five setters so we, we know what happened Ramuna, we know what happened yeah. exactly so we don't really mention it but yeah I I suppose so um I don't yeah he did win I think a couple of titles or more than that last season um but Three, yeah I he think. is I think he's at a career high ranking or he got there uh, not very long ago. But um, yeah, again, it, 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 he's just somebody you you cannot chart out a trajectory for him in terms of his career. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I guess it's going to yeah. be all about like whether he can actually win two fifties again, like whether he can actually find a great run. And I guess on on grass, he's always going to be capable of that. So, mm -hmm. and he's just saved both break points, so we're back to juice now. It's actually been a bit of a break point and break fest across the grounds of Indian Wells. So I've just seen Emma Raducanu save a break point against Yastramska, or rather Yastramska put a backhand very wide to miss the break point opportunity. Um, Armitage will serve and Raducanu has given her advantage on my screen, but we've got some breaks already. Clara Burrell is 2-1 up with a break against Coco Goff, although it looks like Goff is trying to set break back points up now. Um, Cameron Norrie is already break up against Sonigo, 2-1. Ugo, uh, and then Diane Parry is a break up against Leo Fernandez 2 1. And Dodan and Kasatkin is already broken back against Dodan. So we've got a lot of breaks across the uh, across the Indian Wells field at the minute, or across the desert, as uh, Raducanu has just held surf to love, gets herself out of a bit of a marathon, a tricky game there. Um, she's got to serve well to kind of maintain this, uh, this momentum um, at the moment. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was, was kind of out of the loop yesterday, so I'm just looking at the schedule and stuff. Like I didn't see any tennis yesterday. Of course, right. most of mo mostly it's not going to be the same players playing today. In some cases, though, because of the rain, and I'm just seeing that at 3 a.m. my time, there's going to be Ruth against Klein. How am I going to watch that? <laughs> Are you get tactical sleep, tactical nap, tactical sleep? I, I thought you might be all over that one, Damien, to be honest. Yeah, I'm going to try. I'm going to try, you know. The the other night matches, I don't really care. Or actually, Paul Nicholson as well. Like, both the 3 a.m. matches are insane. So, I, I, I think I have to, yeah. I think I have to try. I don't know, actually, you know, is it going to be a nap or not? Because, well, I was out yesterday and my sleeping was, well, I, I, I was actually in bed pretty early. But um, then I also slept a lot through the day today. So, um, yeah, no clue. But I will have to try. I will have to. Sure, who is already choosing to forego sleep for us? Um, yeah, well, just for the weekend. Um, I don't. I don't think I can afford to do that during the weekdays, of course. But uh, yeah, the, the good thing about being in the UAE is that we have three-day weekends. So you know, that's uh, mm -hmm. we have Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays off. It's pretty convenient. So you know, that's more or less half the week, right? So. Uh, yeah, I was wondering why nice. some people were moving out to uh, Dubai and Abu Dhabi from the UK. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're more than welcome here, mate. <laughs> Honestly, I think for tennis it could be a very good idea because soon enough yeah. in that part of the world we might have mm -hmm. a lot of tournaments. Yeah, although oh. I I would hope that instead of Saudis, you know, snooping in and bagging a uh, bagging rights to a wta or atp thousand i hope dubai gets upgraded to an atp 1000 unlikely in terms of the uh, the way the season progresses i mean you know damien you and i spoke about how acapulco we, we're seeing the change in the fields and how you know there's more of an influx of the top players in acapulco compared to dubai in the last few years or so so yeah, maybe it won't make too much sense, but yeah, who knows? Uh, and if, it would have if, to be moved to January, right? Like, like that's kind of the only like that yeah. instead of the one that they're sort of planning in Saudi Arabia before the Australian Open, it would have to be Dubai. I don't know if this is possible, but yeah, but, I mean, get rid of Paris Bercy maybe, and then you know, move on to yeah. The thing is, only one. It's crazy to think that only not one, only two slams have Masters one thousands before. Uh, hmm. And we, sh I hope we'd have a, a Masters 1000 on grass, but you know, there's there's a whole other discourse regarding that. So we'll get to that when we get closer to the grass season. Here's a question, um, a quick update. A series of Avfall stars from Daniel Stramska gives yes, Radu Kano double break lead. Um, how many 1000s is too many 1000s? I think at 10, we are kind of 
you know, sort of pushing it already. Uh, because they, they just don't really feel special anymore if, if it's too much, right? Like if it's too many of them. Uh, I actually feel like, you know, on the draw preview for India Wells with um, John and Vansh, I think, we sort of hinted at this because, well, John always says that anyway. John is, John is very much like, you know, there should be less tournaments. There, they should sort of be more special. Uh, personally, you know, I think um, I'm sort of looking from an individual perspective. I like having a lot of tournaments to watch. I like Same. having a lot of tournaments to cover, you know. So, so you know, I want to earn money. I want to have. I want to do stuff around tennis. So it's fine, for me. However, uh, I have to say that like this Indian Wells draw, we are. I basically didn't care for it. Like there was there, the draw was you know coming up. Uh, the cer no, there was there was no ceremony, but like it was announced, and then we had that draw preview show, and I just arrived there, and John asked me a question about the draw, and I'm like. I have no clue. Like, let's let's sort of talk about it. Let's you know, by, by virtue of of talking about uh, who's who's where, I can actually form some opinions. But I honestly didn't care for actually you know studying it at stuff because it's impossible. Like, I do that for the slams, sure, but I'm not gonna do that for ten more events over the year. Like to you know study it so deeply. Like I uh, so basically, I still don't know who's in which half, especially as right now. Uh, they have sort of you know mixed up in the first few days due to the rain. So um, basically, yeah, I just don't feel like I have the patience to really get so involved into these events as the slums because, well, it's just going to be too much over the course of the year. And I feel like 10 is kind of a number we shouldn't be uh, pushing because we shouldn't, I like, agree, really be you know extending or anything because, yeah, by, by that time, we're kind of just like, every event is a thousand and mm -hmm. it's thousands everywhere and i don't think that actually works good for the actual events and sort of for the interest in them it, it, i'm i'm obviously fine having tennis all year it's actually kind of one of the um well the things that makes the sport special and sort of a different follow than than others however i i do feel like there should be a bit of a cap on the amount of the most the more high profile events uh we got um yeah, we've got uh, John stepping in saying he thinks the limit should be eight. Um, so that's only one less. Um, I think. Oh, yeah. Manorino is just broken for three one. Oh, because he's he's fending off uh, fending off Mahach. Unsurprisingly, I think so Manorino is still a solid player. Um, Radikan is held for a double break. Full love. Mm -hmm. This is ending up being a little bit more straightforward. Although I don't think Yastrzemska is bringing her best level at the minute. Um, yeah, but that's a that's an interesting perspective. I think that I think tennis fans have an, an ideal for how things should uh, work out, um, how things should be, and we all have it's all slightly different variations on the same theme. Um, there are some events that like we could do with it. Um, my personal view is, I'd rather be led on how much is too much, and how it should be based on what the players want to do. Um, if the players say we would rather play only a few big events, I support them. If the players are like, actually, it's better for us and our momentum to play lots and lots of big events, and we are happy with our fitness to be able to achieve that, then I will support them in that position. But that's that's where I stand in it. I'm not going to put a personal preference on it. I would rather be player led. But players aren't necessarily super open on their views about it because they don't want to annoy the wrong people mm -hmm. and realistically like players i don't know they should actually decide because well um it's like the you know the broadcasting and the well, media side of things that kind of keeps the sport going instead of the players so i feel like you know they aren't really the the main people no but I, I think the, the players that. should say when they're having too much there's something going on here on this court by the way your strength has doubled over clutching her abdomen at the minute and mm. wincing in looks like she's in a lot of pain and umber also broke kips on uh, some really good returning actually last few points a couple of the ones that he especially this one on breakpoint like he kind of just blocked a uh, very compact motion at the it was at the body and uh, it kind of got Gibson off balance right away. So he, um, the Frenchman, the recent Dubai champion breaks. So that uh, would be six, well, going for his sixth win in a row, I guess, right? 
Well, yes, Tramps gets back down. The umpire's gone over to check on her, and she's like, yeah, she's practically doubled over on the chair. I think they're getting some people out to have a look at her. She hasn't retired, but players stopped at full love, love 15. Yeah, if um, if I may weigh in, I am not a fan of five of the nine Masters events now being 96-player draws and 10-day events. Um, I just, I think that's in a way... Of what do you call it, torpedoing the appeal of these tournaments? Mm. Uh, because like how how are they how are Grand Slams going to be unique now? Because they're also uh, almost as long, um, you know, in terms of um, almost as large in terms of the draw, almost as long in terms of the tournament. Grand Slams, yeah, we have we have four of them per year, and like Damien mentioned, okay, you know, we we would like to go in depth analyzing the draw and you know keeping in mind which players and which section which half of the draw but do you really want to do that throughout the season um and yeah no exactly uh i'm not a huge fan of that and also i mean having watch i mean when i started following uh tennis week in week out as well and it wasn't really different we had the same nine masters events uh, only two of them were, uh, that is Indian Wells and Miami were 96 player draws and that was fine. It was whatever. But then the rest, it was really exciting because by the third round or in quarterfinals or even the third round, you had some high profile matchups. Like, um, you know, within a couple of days, you already have, uh, you know, some intense action kicking off in the tournament. But here we have to, you know, we have like 32 seeds. It doesn't make too many sense too much sense um yeah those are my two cents on this mahach is a break point to break straight back manorino is 30 15 up i yeah i could see your point of it devaluing the slams um i think you are i agree with you i think the one thing the slams would still have would be that one extra match win um so kind of uh you know win seven matches as opposed to winning six for 1000 because a 96 player draw a seed would still have to win six matches um but it's very marginal in that in that sense and then the only thing kind of going for them is history um which then it be kind of becomes more like a thousand one. points more money thousand points yeah i think the, the points are, are, yeah, are kind of crucial yeah, actually true. yeah and also the in on the men's side you know you have the best of five format as well which always just makes it you know so different but um yeah on the wta it actually is a fair um some, sometimes it is actually a fair sort of thing to say that sometimes a thousand can be as tough or um you know it might be almost as tough as winning a slam if you're winning the thousands on the women's side like there's no reason why you shouldn't be contesting for grand slams as well whereas mm -hmm. on the men's it's it's very different so i guess it's it's kind of a difference for the tours and i like the men's format better like for the slams to actually feel very different to the regular events and maybe that's this will be what pushes the slams to maybe introduce best of five for women later in the tournament i need to give an update Diana skramska has I given emma to... kind of a hug and is packing her racket in her bag this match is over <laughs> we are very lucky today raoni chirune which one which match do we want to like you know just totally destroy let's keep now. an eye out on manorino if he, you know. <laughs> uh, remember 2021 wimbledon yeah so we don't want that happening again yeah yeah so yeah obviously manorino uh yeah manorino versus mahatches and obviously we do have another stream starting up um after this at some point whenever um uh whenever uh who's who is uh the match we're covering feast and daffodil which the following uh, right after manorino and mahach okay so you're sticking with that fantastic yeah. um i might actually go over to the coco goff match because coco goff is about to go a double break down to clara burrell oh uh, yeah it's 15 40 on the goff serve 2-4 so There's a question from Ian in the comments. Um, not that I mean, I knew of a couple of students who I, I don't know if they wanted to turn pro, but if I were to go in the other direction, um, Desiree Krochik is an 
uh, is an alumnus from the university I went to, Arizona State University. Wow. Nice. That's a good name. Multiple yeah. mixed doubles champion. Mm -hmm. Polish name as well. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, um, yeah. Someone for Damien anyway. and I, I guess. Yeah. Um, also, was Jim was asking before. about the, the tour shortening the indoor swing. Um, are we actually shortening the indoor swing on the ATP tour? I don't really think so, but maybe you're asking about challengers. WTA tour anymore. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean the WTA actually. So let's let's talk about WTA and challengers. So um, for challengers, I think it's absolutely stupid. And the past few weeks really showed that because you have awesome draws in like Lugano, uh, Paul Il, you kind of see that there's more interest than that. And it's very weird to start stop playing indoors in Europe, uh, like beginning of March. I don't really know why we don't have it up until uh, the beginning of April, just like previous years, really. But of course, there will be a, a proper indoor swing at the end of the year as well. So, you know, that's, that kind of makes it OK, I suppose. And for the WTA, I don't understand it either. I mean, definitely it's trickier than on the ATP side because you have the WTA finals much earlier than um, you have them much earlier, basically, than on the ATP side. So there's no real space for like a, no, an October, November. Uh, calendar of an indoor season you know so that's kind of understandable to me but i feel like it's very weird that you're gonna have um let's say you're gonna have a lot of players getting to the main tour by virtue of their indoor results in big itfs but then once you actually get there you only have lints and you only have uh Cluj? yeah Cluj this year maybe the wta finals will be indoors as well who the hell knows but uh yeah for, for some players it definitely is uh, a big uh, sort of um yeah disappointment i don't know alicia parks comes to mind although obviously she did not uh, really do much in Linz or Cluj this year either but um yeah definitely there will be a bit of a discrepancy i think between the itfs and how the surfaces are structured there to the main tour and i don't think that should be the case really like they should be pretty similar so that you have players basically yeah, advancing to the main tour in conditions that they will be playing in also later Mm -hmm. I'll take this one from Davey. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think Radikhan has ever been the hardest hitter, but she is hitting with good pace again. Um, we didn't really see it in this match with Yastremska because something was clearly off with Yastremska. But certainly what she's producing, uh, she produced against uh, um, the person she beat two days ago. I covered that match and I it's completely gone up my head who she was playing. Um, oh, sorry, Sarava. Yeah. Sarava, yes. Um, yeah, that was that. There were some really nice shots from that um, that she produced, and I agree. And she's much, she's much better when she's trying to play front foot tennis as opposed to maybe the more kind of scrappier game that she experimented with when she had Torben Belt as her coach, um, where he tried to. Uh, you know, but basically, she was turning into a bit more of a, a counter puncher, and that didn't really work for her. Um, I hope we get that Sabalenka match because it's 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 a big one. Like it's legit, like the best win of Emma's career if she pulls it off. It would Obviously, be, yeah. Not not, not, not no taking into into consideration like the round, of course, of a slam and stuff. Just just sheer opponent and sort of the difficulty level. Agreed. Um, so I just switched over to Burrell versus Goff. Burrell is serving at five two to take the first set over Goff, and she just hit a huge backhand winner. Huge backhand winner from Clara Burrell for 15 love. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, Goff is going to have to try and come back from this. Uh, otherwise, this could open up the draw a little bit more, given Elena Rabakina just pulled out with a gastrointestinal illness, uh, pulled out yesterday, um, somewhat unexpectedly, given she'd literally done a pre-tournament press conference yesterday, which we have on the channel gave no indication that she would be about to pull out. Um, that was, by the way, the same thing in Dubai, right? Gastrointestinal. Yeah. yeah, and the same thing that took her out of the French as well. Um, that's why she withdrew from the French. No, actually, food. in Dubai, maybe, I don't know. Uh, she, she, I think she injured herself. Obviously, she withdrew for a different reason, but I guess she injured herself during the Doha final. Uh, and, yeah, I, she, well, she she was crappy in the Azarenka match, which was a retirement, of course. But yeah, it was kind of out of nowhere. We didn't expect her to have a, um, you, you know, an illness as opposed to you know an injury. I think it was a gastrointestinal illness. Yeah, yeah, it's the same thing. That's it's the same problem oh. as Dubai. 
yeah, that's the same reason she's pulled out. So she's clearly not feeling very well. Mm. Um, I'm hoping it's not an underlying condition that she has. Um, mm. It can be something that, you know, people can have reoccurring gastrointestinal problems. Um, she's not revealed it. She probably won't reveal it. It's not our business. Um, but it's something to, to maybe think about given it's kind of a, it's happened twice in the last year. Um, and of course it's taken her out of two 1000 events and she's about to lose a chunk of points. I don't know how vulnerable her number force places. The only person who could overtake her is Pagula and that involves her winning the tournament, um, which is probably unlikely given she doesn't particularly like these conditions. Goff is walking off court having been um, after Burrell holds to love for 6-2, by the way. Um, huge hitting from the French woman. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with Rabakina is I'm hoping that um, she can manage this and get back on on top because the she's the draw is always more interesting when she's in it and playing well. But if Goff's in trouble here, then the, and some people might already say this anyway, but the women's draw is suddenly all about Sviantek and Sabalenka. Yeah, and we think I th I think we said at the draw preview as well of John and Vance that this is kind of like Dubai, where like the first three seeds fall out, and you just have total pandemonium, and no one knows who's gonna win anymore. And Justin Pauli, you might as well uh, complete the Dubai Indian Wells double. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and of course, Justin Pauli is like hardly you know the most unexpected winner ever or something like that. Um, it could have been someone way uh, way sort of you know even lower ranked. But um, yeah, I'm just sort of saying that there are three main favorites, and after that, it's kind of free for all. Uh, do um, we actually see more upsets in the WTA? I'm thinking about it. Uh, well, I guess we do. Probably the serves are, I think. Hmm. I think there's a lot of different factors in there. Um, uh, I think um, I think there's a lot of different things. The serve is a factor. It's easy to break. Um, I think the the distance in the past between the top players and the rest is not as big, um, or is the consistency is not there. I think that's partly also down to um, a few other factors, um, sort of uh, health related. Um, but I think now I think they're just as consistent as each other. They've both got a clear sort of top four at the at the top um, that it's usually a surprise when they lose and they're kind of consistent relative to everyone else. Um, certainly, I think if you look at the WTA, you're sort of seeing five and below as being people who would be, you'd be slightly surprised if they won something big um, compared to the top four. And I'd say the same on the ATP. Mm -hmm. I also don't know how to say this in a manner that's like not misogynistic or something, but I think I know where you're going with it. And psychologically, I yeah, I mean, psychologically, also, you would find people, I don't know if it's actually true, if it actually holds up, but like psychologically, you would probably find uh, even scientists who would say that, you know, the, the way that uh, a woman's psyche or like mentality works is different as well. I don't know if it's no, actually not, true. But... I, I, it's not, I wouldn't say that. I think I mean, it might be true, but I don't think it makes them less competitive. Yeah, um, I don't. I don't less, know that. Just I guess more prone to streaks and like to you know. I think losing maybe, games in a row, but that, that's look, also connected. I, I'm to not sorry. sure. I I feel fully comfortable having this conversation on a straw with three guys. Um, <laughs> on a straw with three guys, um, I would. Pro it's a conversation I think is worth having, but I would rather have a female voice, com contributing to. You're such a politician. You're such a politician. No, but it's I guess it was, this is actually also <laughs> connected to serves, you know, uh, mm -hmm. because, well, basically, if you don't have a strong serve game, like, how are you going to sort of keep winning points when you go away for a few games? I guess if you, you know, in the men's game, you more more usually they are sort of uh, able to rely on them. Yeah, but it own. would balance out on both sides, right? Because you have you know, women competing against one another, so neither has that advantage. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. But yeah, for me, the easy answer for slams is best of three. Uh, yeah, for slams. More, for slams. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> more prone to upset. So I, I think it's more to do with that. But over the last year, in the big events especially, we have had a decent amount of gatekeeping from the top four, top five. Anyway, um, you know, we have had, yeah, Sabalenka winning uh, multiple big titles, Rabakina winning a couple of thousands. 
uh, golf winning a thousand in a slam, ego winning a, a couple of thousands in a slam. So yeah, you know, I think only Wondru Sova and who else? Maybe okay, Sakari at Guadalajara, but again, you didn't have a lot of players competing over there. Um, and who else? But then I, mean, I, I could balance that out by saying ATP had um, Andre Rublev and Hubert Hercatch winning one thousands last year. They were mm -hmm. those are a little bit more unexpected results. Yeah, that's not comparable, I think, to Vondroshova and Sakari, really. I'd say it yeah, is. Maybe to Sakari. Sakari maybe to is Sakari. different because, again, we didn't have all of the you know, top players competing in Guadalajara. Oh, Wimbledon is fair enough. But 2022, we had... Um, 2022, we had Chorich, Karenia Buster. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun thousand. thousand. Um, that was another one as well. But we had, yeah, we had Nori before that also. Nori, so. yeah. Nori. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, and Derek's making good points around it. Yeah, there, there were definitely uh, when uh, with the kind of like you know, pe women who've kind of dominated the game in comparison, you know, Serena, Graf, Selesh, Navratilova, Evert, um, Navratilova, particularly, I think she she went the entire, I think she lost one match in the entirety of 1984, which is insane level of dominance. Who did she lose to? It's a it's a great trivia question, actually. Who did she lose oh, to? Oh gosh, I know this. It was um I asked this to Vance recently, I think, and I don't and I, don't I think looked she gave this up, me the answer. I looked this up recently. By the way, Coco Goff is a shank to forehand is already a breakdown. Um I I, I, I know this I know this woman only from that much, but apparently she was like a proper uh, it was, player in because it was the year. Australian Open that year because she was on No for no she... wasn't it wasn't the French? 84 no, 83? it was Australian, I'm pretty sure. 80, 83. It was the French for sure. I'm talking about 84. No, but that was that was the only defeat of Navratilova's season in 83. Uh, I'm talking a different year. That's probably why I can't remember it. Um, it no. Um, I keep getting, I keep wanting to say Kathy Jordan. It wasn't Kathy Jordan because she beat Chris Evert. It, it's close. Yeah. It's close. It's pretty close. <laughs> Barbara Jordan. No, the other way around. So the name is oh. okay. Oh, um, Kathy Rinaldi? No, no. Wrong year. Kathy Horvath. Oh, Horvath. Oh. Yeah. Probably the only thing Kathy Horvath is fav famous for. Uh. <laughs> also, what is that head to head between her and Edward? 43 and 39. It's insane. It, yeah, it's one of the greatest tennis rivalries. Um, I mean, Kafi Horvath apparently was a top 10 player, reached quarterfinals in the French two consecutive years. But yeah, from the perspective of a fan that was born in like... Yeah, ah, okay. So I guess in a way... I, like, I don't remember her from anything else. Hmm. In a way, it's like Soderling beating Rafa Tarji, yeah, but he it was is, a top it is. player. Yeah, I mean, it, it was the end of that season and the season after. So. Uh, looking something up, uh, yeah. So the overall win loss, yeah, it was okay. Yeah, eighty three was the yeah she it was the issue one. She lost one match. I thought it was eighty four, but eighty four was equally dominant because she only lost two matches the entire year, including the record seventy four match winning streak. I guess with eighty four, you might have been thinking of John McEnroe because that was the year when he had that insane streak as well. Yeah, yeah. Three losses, I think, for this season. Um, yeah, that was that was a dominant. I don't think we'll ever see in the. In either the men's or the women's game. Any Again. comment on the uh, Burel match? Because Derek is asking about it. Um, um, yeah, at the minute, well, from what I'm watching, Burel is just clobbering the ball. And although Goff can usually like defend pretty well against big hitters, um, Goff's made a few, but she's putting Goff under a lot of pressure. Um, and she's hitting some great winners. And uh, But like Goff's defense finally wins her that point. It's 40 30. As Burrell sticks it in the net, so I will um, I'll keep an eye on it um, for sure. Uh, Forty thirty uh, for Burrell to try and hold and consolidate this break. Uh, she's going to be uh, serving now. Serves up the tee. Forehand return from Goff is right by the backhand. Goes cross court backhand. Goff drop shot from Burrell is really good. Goff still gets to it. Burrell's having to. Pick that up from behind her. Goff does a back backwards volley, backhand up the into the, from Goff is into the net. Both that was a cat and mouth point from both players. Goff was up and down the court, and eventually Goff was the one who failed. And it's two six two two love Burrell. That was a 
a, contest, a decently contested game. So, yeah, I'd say at the minute, Burrell's playing really, really well. Yeah, um, Gibson actually just saved two break uh, two, sorry, two set points at 4-5, and we'll now have a break point on Umber. Uh, the first one was like a winner on the line forehand, but then Umber just gave him a couple of cheaper errors. So suddenly Wait, out of Umber just cruising. Break earlier? Yeah, he is, he is. Two set points, oh, and now it? he... Oh. Now there's a break point for Gibson um, to go five all. And it would definitely be like a huge turnaround as, you know, Umber was not really troubled until then. And until yeah. having these two set points, uh, basically he was cruising towards the finish line, just barely puts his second serve in play here. He actually clips the net on the next shot as well. So he was super tense. And it's kind of on Gibson here for throwing this forehand out because it was clear that like even if you make Umber play, he probably will miss something in the next few shots. He was super tense. Uh, like nothing was easy for him anymore at this point. Um, just to uh, just to check in on your match, Shrihari, and then I'll go around the ground with some updates. Um, mm -hmm. What's it looks yeah, like? It's, it's actually quite atrocious from both players at the moment. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, Manorino serving 5-1 and has had a couple of set points already. Mahach has had a few break points, but now Manorino serving it 5-1 deuce. Some really bad errors from Mahach in this game. Uh, I think it was a deuce or break point, I don't remember. But um, he was at the net and he had a volley to put away. I think Manorino's knob was going wide, but he tried to hit, get the volley, it bounced on his own side. And now... Manorino has another set point. Okay, so we'll stay with you for set. We've got set points on uh, Shrihiri and Damien's screens. Uh, so I guess mm -hmm. just jump in when we get a result. Yeah, we're in. Manorino's about to serve. Got he holes. gets it done with this a and A's out wide. Mahach can't get to it, and it's 6-1 in the first set for Adrian Manorino. What's happening in Umber Kipson? Has Umber secured the first set? Not yet. Um, second serve here, I actually know um, what the result of this point will be already, but I'm watching it now, and it's not going to be won. It's actually a double fault, so yeah, I mean, he's he's really incredibly tense in this game. Just to go around the grounds, um, Diana Schneider and Maria Sakari are warming up on Stadium 3, but in terms of actual results, Cameron Norrie won the first set 6-4 against Lorenzo Sonigo. Uh, Leila Fernandez is serving to stay in the first set at 3-5 against Diane Parry. Um, he's literally just got to advantage in that game. Um, Lucia Bronzetti's won the first against Annalena Kalina 6-3, and Kasat Kina um, comes from a breakdown to win the opening set against Ocean Dodan 6-3, but Dodan's got two break points to go up in the second set, so that one looks like being a bit of a battle on Stadium 9. You are now up to date with everything tennis related. Um, yeah, the only results uh, from today so far being uh, that uh, Emma Raducanu is through against Daniel Yoshimska after the Ukrainian had to retire for London on the first. Um, Davey is very happy to hear that Cameron Norrie is up a set. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah. that is such, that, that backhand, I don't understand why he holds his his right hand so high up the neck. Yeah, Umber finally took the set. Uh, I would say a pretty weak effort actually from breakpoint up from Kipson. Just yeah, not putting in the you know, I'll say stamping down on the gas pedal or whatever whenever it was when it, when it was needed most with Umber kind of struggling to get over that finish line. Uh, also, quick question for you guys: Ben Shelton not playing the Olympics. Good. Oh, here we go. Or not? I let Nick take this first. No, no, I think you should go first because I haven't said All right. Yet. <laughs> yeah, look, I'll say this. Um, the Olympics in tennis doesn't mean the same as the Olympics in other sports, really. There's nothing different. I mean, it's just, okay, you're playing once every four years. For players, it means a lot, especially for Novak. I mean, he's been vocal about wanting that gold medal for Serbia. Um, but yeah, for us tennis fans, mostly we okay. Maybe we see something unique in terms of some of uh, you know uh, the best players in the world, you know, being flag bearers for their respective nations. But other than that, yeah, I don't, I don't see what's unique about you're still playing. I mean, it's, you're playing a you know a tournament, um, and then yeah, 
it, it, it's just like any other tournament in terms of how it plays out. I don't see anything unique to it except, okay, yeah, you're winning medals instead of, you know, trophies. Um, yeah, and now especially there are no ranking points, um, you know, for, for the Olympics. So why would it make sense, especially for someone like Shelton, when it's going to be played uh, at Roland Garros? Not a very strong surface for him, at, at least at this stage of his career. If he feels like, okay, if there is, for instance, there is an ATP event, uh, ATP 250 or 500 in North America that he can play, why would he not play that, look to get ranking points, bump up his seeding for the US Open, rather than play the Olympics and potentially lose early. So I and I think Dominic Thiem did something similar. In, uh, uh, was it? Um, yeah, he yeah, skipped the Olympics, Olympics once. Yeah. Before, obviously, he got injured before the Olympics in 2021. Um, I think Kasper maybe skips the Tokyo Roo, Olympics. Yeah. Kasper Roo as yeah. well. Um, so yeah, and players are have done it. I I get why they would do it also. So yeah, I mean Kasper cleaned up three tournaments, got 750 ranking points. So yeah. By the way, I'll come in on my. I'll make my point in a minute to say Coco Goff um, hit a huge forehand return, hits the baseline, catches Burrell by surprise, and Burrell misses um, her attempt to pick up the ball, and Goff breaks to love to get back on serve in the second set. Um, here's where I stand with the Olympics thing. Um, I think it's about. Um, I'll just say, David. Yeah. Uh, so David. Yes. Yeah, so Emma is through. Yastrzemska were tired. Um, from the match with some kind of um, abdominal pains. Um, so, yeah, um, we have switched matches round. Um, yeah, I think we need to change the name of the stream, maybe. <laughs> I don't know how to do that, so um, we'll just have to do, cope with it. Um, so, um, but uh, the... Uh, but, yeah, so in terms of the Olympics, I think... When you play the Olympics, you are right, Shahiri. It's not for money. It's not for points. Um, and so, from a very career-focused perspective, they don't matter, especially since as much, especially since as a tennis player, it isn't the biggest prize you can win. It's for it is the slams. That being said, for a lot of people and for a lot of athletes, um, winning for your country is um, a really significant. Thing. You talked about Novak Djokovic winning that gold medal for Serbia. It's about playing for your country, um, which for some people, and including a lot of fans, particularly from that country, is the biggest responsibility for that athlete. Um, and so I think that's where it comes from. Um, also, the Olympics is a big event. If you win it, you're probably, given that like all the top players now play at the Olympics, that's another opportunity to get one over your rivals. Um, hence, and Derek's giving Monica Puig a good example. Like Puig, what, it was a big deal for Puig winning it because not only did she beat some really, really good players to beat to win it, she beat Angie Kerber in the final, who was one of the four players, if not the four player of 2016, um, but also won it for Puerto Rico, who had never had a gold medal winning athlete before. Um, so a lot of it is a sentimental thing as well as um, a a kind of a kudos thing um and uh i guess that's why um the olympics matters so i guess for shelton the reaction maybe against his statement has been very much well don't you care about your country don't you care about your role in that country now damien and i had a talk about nationalism a couple of streams ago we don't get that mentality um i'm not entirely sure um uh, I, I, I highly doubt you do, Shahri, because I know you will. I really know you well enough to say that. Um, <laughs> but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and uh, so it's it's in the mentality that's very kind of alien to us. So my perspective on it is Shelton has to do what's best for his career. Um, he has no problem, and I think uh, given that he probably doesn't have an awful lot, of, it's not a great opportunity for him, given the surface it's going to be on. It's probably a smart choice for him to build up to something that he can win. Um, I guess what I'm saying is, I think the Olympics do matter, but it's okay if they don't matter that much to certain players. Oh well, yeah, I mean, for me, I think it's a great decision for him. 
if he doesn't believe that he can win a medal on clay, no point playing really. Like the Olympics is kind of a medal or bust, right? Because like you don't actually get any points for it. You don't get money for it. So like it's kind of if you think that you have a shot at winning a medal, go for it. If you don't, Ooh. why waste your uh, post Wimbledon preparation for the hard courts? and switch to clay if you're not a player who necessarily wants to do that. So I think uh, for Shelton, it makes perfect sense. Sorry, that ooh was um, yeah, Burrell missing. I figured um, it wasn't anything I said. <laughs> it, was a, it was a swing volley that she ran, that she was trying to run up to the net and hit it while she was running forward. And it ends up hitting pretty much the backboard without bouncing. Um, so uh, yeah. Goff has hold, held for 3-2 in this set, and this is very, very much still in this match, having only recently been a set in the breakdown. Um, and on, on the point I was talking about, yeah, not only better for Shelton, but actually, hey, there's probably better Americans on clay. He Giving up his spot means that there's another American who could come in who's better on the surface that they could, they could have and who might have a shot. Now, obviously, it's a highly competitive field, um, but um, Tommy, uh, I mean, like, Actually, who who do the Americans have that's like you would give the best chance of winning a big clay event? I think Fritz has shown good results at Monte Carlo. Tiafo has a clay 250 title. Um, I'm not sure about Tommy Paul on clay. Um, but um, and and then Corder's okay on clay, I think. He got that French Open fourth round um, a couple of years back. He has a title as well on clay. Oh, does he? He's there you check go. in out though. In Parma or Tam or Cagliari or whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah, one of these, like Parma maybe. Yeah. One of these one one time Italian events. Yeah. Parma, I would say, but I'm not sure. But yeah, um, I was kinda out for a moment because my internet connection died. Uh, but um yeah, I guess we're, we're talking Americans and Clay then. Bring yeah. back Bien Fratangelo to the tour. Bien <laughs> Fratangelo to the Olympics. Please. Draft him but, back um, in. <laughs> Yeah, I like the Olympics on clay. Uh, I feel like especially there will be a few players skipping it who usually would play it, and it's perfectly fine. Like, if you don't feel like you can win a medal, there's really no point in playing on clay post-Wimbledon, I think. So, yeah, Shelton will do much better in um, in the North American hardcore season for it. Well, yeah, Mahach has just been broken, and it's... It's just, I mean, he's barely getting a racket to a lot of these shots and way too many errors. It's just, it's been almost a no-show from him, even though he's had quite a few chances in the previous set, whenever he was down a break. Um, but yeah, Manorino 6-1, 2-1 up with a break. Is he, do you reckon, do we reckon that Mahach put a little bit too much effort into taking out Stan Favrinka? I don't know. Maybe he has to do with the conditions more, uh, I don't think he put yeah. really enjoys it here. Um, it's windy, it's high bouncing, it's like the opposite of what Mahaj likes. Yeah, I remember he, he he did well, even though he didn't win a match, he did well in Dubai. He, he won qualifying, so I guess he did win a match. He beat Bautista Root one of those matches this year. Uh, lost to Bublik in third yeah. set breaker. Last year, of course, we know he pushed Djokovic to a third set breaker. Those conditions are much more suited to his game than Say Indian was. I think even Houston, he made the quarters, if I'm not mistaken, last year. Yeah, he did. Mm. Lost yeah. to Hanfman, I think. I think he got blown out. Mm. But but yeah, uh, basically, anytime it's like low bouncing, slick. So Dubai definitely works. And obviously, all indoor yeah. venues, really. So um, yeah, Indian Wells, I don't think it's great for him. Although he did play pretty well in Indian Wells in 2022. Um, I think he qualified. And yeah, lost the to second Medvedev. round where he lost to Medvedev. Yeah, but I don't remember who he beat in the first round or in the qualifying. But he lost to Medvedev in the second round for sure. It was like a six four six two maybe or something along these lines. Crowd's getting very excited as Coco Goff picks off a passing shot attempt by Bur uh, by Burrell um, on the forehand, going cross court with a lovely touch with a lovely volley, great touch, and Goff's now got break point chances um, to suddenly go from two love down to four two up and take four consecutive games here on uh, Stadium One. And Burrell double faults. So, uh, yeah, all over there. 4-2 Goff. Comeback mm. is on. Uh, just a bit of an update across the grounds as well. Sonigo was two love up with a break in that second set, but Cam Norrie's literally just broken back. 
Deanne Parry served for the first set uh, against Leila Fernandez at 5-4. Leila broke back and Misha got broken again. And Parry is now serving at 6-5 to try to serve for the set again. Bronzetti is a set and a break up against Kalanina. And uh, Kasakina is a set and a break up against Dodan. Parry is having like a bit of a quiet breakthrough the last couple of events, right? I mean, I don't think I've seen people talking about her too much, but like, yeah, the... the, 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 the um, Kasatkina, of course, um, clash in Abu Dhabi, the Austin quarterfinal, I think. And of course, she actually like almost beats Mira Andreeva at the Australian Open, but almost was not enough. Yeah, she's been regularly winning on tour. Um, I think pretty much every event um, she's got, she's entered, she's got a couple of wins, be it qualifying or something else. And the only event that she's entered that she didn't get a win at was the ATX Open. Um, no, it wasn't ATX because she did win that. She won a couple of matches there. Um, Qatar, where she lost to Eric Andreva in qualifying. Um, but yeah, here she's beaten Trevor San, and then yeah, she's just got the first set against Fernandez 7 5. And yeah, obviously a young prospect, um, obviously from France, made waves when she beat Craig Gikova at the French Open a couple of years ago. And I think she followed up with another really, really good match at Roland Garros as well. Obviously one of the few WTA players to be rocking a single-handed backhand and making it work. Um, yeah, I, I think Parry is uh, is a name to keep an eye on, uh, for sure. Um, and it's good to see her getting a little bit more uh, consistency um, in her game and very much deserving of a top 100 place. Um, Davey's got a question about Leila Fernandez. Is she still fighting demons from the US Open final? Not as much as Radu Kanu. Um, I think Layla's problems has been more matchups um, than anything else. Um, she had she was injured in the back half of 2022 after against the Roman Garros quarterfinals. Um, but um, yeah, she's always got a, a scrappy game that needs to be on for her to um, go cut, to kind of really perform and go deep in tournaments. I love watching her. I think she's box office. Um, the energy she brings to the match when she's fired up is fantastic and i love her ability to counter punch uh and that forehand when it like that sort of lefty forehand up the line is just a beautiful uh shot to be honest um oh this is a messy point by the way as um burrell has a point at the net that she could literally put anywhere on the court it comes off the top of the net and behind goth who'd come in so burrell's got um Burrell's going himself into this goth service game uh, but yeah, that's kind of where I, I stand on the Leila Fernandez situation. I don't think it's anything to do with the US Open final, especially since she's the one who lost it. Um, I don't think she has m as much to prove as Radu Kanu. Um, I think there's other factors such as uh, the way she plays, although highly entertaining, um, isn't going to work as often as other game styles. Um, yeah, and I think that she doesn't really have many demons from that final to, to fight, really, you know. And um, basically, it, realistically, it's been a very strong patch for her the last few months or so. It's just mm -hmm. that she kind of hit herself in, uh, like, shot herself in the foot with this one loss, which came in the most important event, the Australian Open, where she loses to Alicia Parks, who, you know, hasn't won in ages, really, uh, on the tour. And um, also, of course, Coco Goff could have been her third round at the Australian Open. I think she would have had a very yeah. serious chance at getting that upset. So, uh, yeah, she kind of really set herself back with that, maybe with that one loss. But otherwise, she has been actually really strong, Layla. It's like her most consistent punch so far, I think. Other than, uh, of now, course, you know, these two, these big two Grand Slam results. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. I did watch that match. And I thought Layla was going to win it. I do think Parks played really, really well in that match, though. Uh, where she beat Layla, but you're right, that was a missed opportunity for her. And now I'm thinking, heck, could that have been a semi-final in Australia, um, given the way the draw kind of went? Yeah. Um, at the she was my pick for the semis. She was my pick for the semis, if I remember correctly. Oh, that match with Sapolenka would have been fun, I think. I don't know if Layla would have won it, oh. but she would have been of it. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know if maybe you covered this comment already it meant a lot to monica pui because she was literally yeah yeah we covered that one all right 
during the Olympics. Yeah, competition. Of course, it means to it means a lot to everyone, right? But yeah, Puig is a good answer. Yeah, especially player, for someone, example, I think player who. Yeah, where where is she from? Puerto Rico or Puerto Rico? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the tennis scene is already big there, so of course it would mean more. I don't think a lot of sports are big over there. It's a quite a small country. Mm, yeah, that too. Yeah, it's not I was a actually country. keeping my eye on other matches. So, it was, um, anyway, so yeah, Mahach is just held for two, three, but he's still down a break. I see that Coco Golf has just reeled off four in a row. Uh, five in a row now. Yeah. All right, yes, just two zero down. Two zero down, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Goff's just, um, yeah. I mean, the scoreboard's slightly ahead of me, but um, yeah, she's really had to scrap this game out. Burrell's made this one a bit of a fight. Um, I'm watching the point where she holds now, pushes Burrell back with a really great forehand, and then again forehand right in the corner. Burrell struggles to pick it off, and Goff holds. And that seems that combo of. Um, Goff hitting a forehand right to Burrell's feet is actually working quite well because Burrell's getting pushed back and she doesn't have time to move around for the shot. And so whatever she tries, even if it gets in court, it's just giving Coco Goff plenty of time to pick it off. Thank you, Davey. We we try. Um, I I can't say I always know what I'm talking about, and, um, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll take the compliment. Thank you very much. Um, is it Murray who said that 20 miles an hour first serve? I think it was, um, I thought it was someone talking about the 1999 Australian Open. Um, that yeah. was kind of not patchy. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think Matthew Willis had put out a tweet, uh, Matthew Willis from Twitter, uh, mm -hmm. who goes by Matt Drackett. Uh, you should, uh, those on Twitter should follow him, you know, he's a very insightful account. Um, he had mentioned, obviously, on average, uh, I think, uh, 24 kilometers per hour, not miles per hour. Uh, the first serve speed has gone up by uh, from 1999 Australian Open to uh, the first couple of rounds in Dubai this year. I think that's what Sean's referring to. That was yeah. what Murray mentioned in his most recent interview to Tennis Channel. I think it was after beating Gofa. Yeah. Um, it's an interesting, I think it's an interesting point um, to make. It, it's a sign of how the game's evolved, uh, for sure, uh, uh, over the years. You know, obviously, yeah, technology. surfaces, racket technology, and you know, tennis becoming more of a power centric game, also. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was always kind of inevitable, really, as the athleticism as the players improve as well. Um, over the years, um, sports science um, and um, athlete, athlete development um, is going to play a huge role in that. Uh, but neither none of us are experts in that, unfortunately. We need to get someone who's actually a sports scientist or uh, to actually come on the show. Um, I know one or two who are trying to get qualifications in that area, um, but uh, not focused on tennis, sadly, more focused on football because that's what people care about in the uk maha just half a chance here two three mannering or something three two 30 all he's just double faulted from 30 15. will he take the chance he has he has a look at the second serve um he's had quite a few break points come and go didn't really take any of them um Second serve for Manorino, loose looking shot for Mahaj, but he's mid rally and he's just missed a regulation backhand. It was a poor error. And he's just shrugging to his box and you know, understandably frustrated and just sort of hitting his thighs with his racket and frustrated. That that would have been an opening to get back into the match, but it is game point for Manorino for four two in the second set. Yeah. Uh, so at the minute, uh, Manorino looking set to kind of move on his way towards um, a uh, move on his way to uh, towards uh, getting through to the next round and getting another win under his belt in this sort of latter stage um, uh, sort of latter stage um, peak that he's on. Um, mm -hmm. uh, 
obviously, once that match is over, um, we will be covering uh, Arthur Feast versus Davidovich Fakina, which is on the following court. So, uh, obviously, uh, we'll probably hop over to that. Uh, we'll probably hop over to that live stream um, once that gets underway. Um, I will probably stick with this Coco Goff match on this stream um, until it ends, and then um, I'll close it down, and everyone can hop over to. Uh, the other one but obviously that depends because this one could get very very interesting i think uh burrell has currently got a point to hold serve at 40 30 um to try and extend the second set and continue the the pressure on coco goff um it looks like the, sorry well would um, you say the way burrell was playing a drop off would have been inevitable um Maybe I mean she was she was hitting pretty big, pretty confidently. Um, I do think it's a certain element where Goff has locked down um, and is making things tricky for her. Uh, but certainly, yeah, Burrell is not hitting as hard as uh, she was, or at least she wasn't hitting as many winners. Um, that's a lovely inside-out forehand from Goff to draw the error from uh, Burrell's now deuce opportunity for Goff to try and win six games in a row here. Um, I'm not sure what's going on in the Parry Fernandez match, but apparently that match was suspended. Um, I don't know what was going on uh, over there. There's a few people who've broken back in matches. Uh, Norrie is now a set and a break up on Sonigo, 6-4-3-2. Oh, he was a breakdown, not very really long ago. Cameron, he's weird back and are probably moving through then. <laughs> Most likely, yes. Um, what's happening with Kipson and uh, Umber? Because we actually haven't talked about that match for a bit. Yeah, we haven't, uh, because I guess there's, there just hasn't been that much to talk about, uh, really. Uh, <laughs> Not as it's been hope. Bit... Well, I mean, for now, Kipson, other than that one game at four, what was it, four six? Uh, I mean, four five in the first. Other than that game, he hasn't really threatened Umber, but he's doing okay to sort of stick with him in the second set, and maybe some chances will come, but just a second ago, it seemed like he might have a decent opening to go 15-30 up, didn't get it, and for now, Umber is mostly cruising on serve, besides that one shaky game. Nice to see you, Nolan. Doing very well, thank you, and uh, um, hopefully uh, Shreya and Damien are too. Um, so yeah, we're uh, we're currently just co um, covering a fair few different matches. Um, Damien's covering uh, Kipson versus Umber. sure has got eyes on Manorino versus Mahach, um, ready for whilst he waits for Feast and Davidic for Keenan to get underway. And I've got eyes on Burrell versus Goff on Stadium One. Goff serving to take us into a decider in this uh, match. And what else is going on? I've said so Norris has set up on a break up on Sonigo. Um, Schneider and Sakura is still warming up, which is weird. Um, Dianne Parry and Leila Fernandes have just started the second set, so I'm assuming one of the players went off court. Kalanina has broken back against Bronzetti, um, and Dodan's managed to get it back to 4 all in the second set against Kasatkina. So Wait, didn't uh, Kalanina and Bronzetti play in Abu Dhabi as well? I, I don't know. remember. Probably. Maybe. Oh, Manorina is a break point to serve for the match at 5-2. Oh, that well, that's going to make things very comfortable for him. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they did, and Kalanina won that six one seven six. Yeah, this one's going but in the now, opposite run. Direction. Yeah, the script has been flipped at least for now. Um, if a Bronzetti wins, I'm sure Mario will be very very happy. Backhand dumped into the net by Thomas Mahach and Manorino shortly will serve for a place in the third round. I completely jinxed Mahaj, didn't I? <laughs> I mean, I thought this should be a, he should win this, but it's been, I mean, it's been a terrible performance from him. Pretty terrible. I mean, at least it could have held the service game. Uh, you know, get the kept Manorino within, uh, you know, touching distance, but two breaks up. Is, he, is it because he's struggling with the conditions, as we were talking about earlier? I, yeah, I don't think he's too comfortable with the conditions here. Um, what what we've been hearing, of course, is that the outside courts are slower, I mean, slower than the main stadium courts. Um, 
it seems that way at least. And um, yeah, I think he and Wawrinka play on Stadium One or two. Yeah. I think Stadium One. Um, so yeah, it didn't really seem like it. Although it was a crappy match from him, he still played at a high enough level to win it. But errors all over the place here. I mean, I think one all in the first set he had break points. He had break points to break back for two three. He had break points to get one of the breaks back at five one. He had half a chance at two three in this set. He had 40 15 at two four. Yeah, just plenty of errors. I can't wait to look at the stats right after this match just to get an idea of how many unforced errors he's committed. Coco has Should 40 be above 30 comfortably. Yeah. Coco Goff is at 40, was at 40 love trying to serve for the set. And she's in a real cat and mouse rally here with uh, Burrell, who just misses um, her pickup attempt on the run on the backhand. And it was a very narrow miss. Goff is roaring in celebration to take it to a third set. But um, having very, very nearly been pegged back to juice, uh, the first set point was missed with an inside out forehand that was just too acute from the American. Second, second was saved by Burrell with a rocket return. And then that third one could have gone either way, but it went the way of Coco Goff. So we're into a decider on Stadium One. Hmm. But I suspect a match is going to be over uh, very shortly for uh, Manorino and uh, Mahash. Yeah, it's 30 love for me here. Yeah, well, we'll stick with you then. We'll go um, Berg has a break point as well. So oh, updates all over the place go up a set and a break on Patrick Kipson and let's see if the American can actually uh, save it. He was very off up as well in this game so a little brutal for him to be in this position now. Okay. I mean wow. is Kipson the typical American prototype player? Big serve, big forehand. I can't really say that he is. I mean he is more complete than that. However, mm. he definitely ha is, has a bit of a like a typical game, I would say, you know, mm. just, yeah. Decent serve, decent everything, likes to play on the front foot, uh, you know, doesn't really stand out in, in many ways. So, so it's a bit of a yes and no, uh, if you may. But um, he, he does have a solid backhand and like, you know, it's not uh, like who is like the most typical American like that. It's not a Jack Sock type of deal, you know, mm. but, um, but yeah, he, he does not have the most like, you know, Unique game. No, definitely not. Second so and uh, Umber has in fact broken. Again, it just starts with a really good return. He's like standing pretty close to the baseline, blocking them. Kipson maybe not getting the spot serving that he usually gets. And um, Umber then is able to just take over. So this seems like the Frenchman should be pretty safe here from now on. 6 4 4 3. Of course, he did get pretty nervous trying to serve out the first set. So we'll see if the, the second is any similar or not. David, you're asking dangerous questions here because we have a hardcore Novak Djokovic fan on the stream. Um, and uh, so I think we need hmm. to... Uh, Marin Cilic, Marin Cilic. Just answer Marin, Marin Cilic. Cilic. And, you know, we, we, avoid yeah, the, yeah. We, we avoid the controversy. We avoid the controversy. I, I'm it, definitely more annoyed. It, no, I'm, I'm going to go with Zverev, actually. Now, he's gotten really annoyed. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It, it, You're going to go with Zverev for every Marino's question one. that contains the word annoying. So Oh, for sure. I mean, but uh, we'll get back to that shortly. Manorino has just defeated Thomas Mahach, 6-1, 6-2. Yeah, My attention. So there we go. Something. That match is done. So, uh, yeah. Yep. Um, so I should be heading to the other stream. If you if you uh, want to head to the other stream with Tom um, to cover, um, yeah, as we get ready for Feast versus David Ojikida, obviously there'll probably be a few minutes before they walk out on court. So I guess I'll. Um, it's up to you, Shahiri, if you want to stick with us for a bit or whether you want to go. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll stay here for about five, ten minutes. Um, and then, you know, I'll get. Uh, I'll get in touch with Tom on the other stream who's waiting. Um, but <laughs> Nurlan's comment about Damien. I mean, I d d just, I don't know. Um, Dam Damien is paying very close attention to a match we asked him that he wants to pay attention to. 
So yeah. I'm actually also watching darts, so it could be that. <laughs> oh, my word! <laughs> well. Maybe Nurlan is too. Maybe Nurlan is not. Who's winning too, the darts? Uh, uh, well, winning currently, the... Luke Littler actually, but um, I oh. hope for a turnaround from the Polish eagle, who is three-four down against him in a best of eleven match. Oh yes, the wonder kid. That's about yeah, what yes, I'm about. stats are up here. Zero of six breakpoints for Mahach. Awaiting the winners and on for I don't know if they're gonna show them. Maybe they will, but right now they're just showing the service stats along with the. They might not ace. do it on the outside courts. I don't oh know, yeah, it's right? true. I mean, it's yeah, I I don't know, but it's possible that um right. that they only do it for the. Yeah, world. coming back to the annoying service routine. Look, was Zverev is bouncing the ball like fifty times now, and to begin with, he lifts his shirt up and he bites his chains. I don't. What is he trying to do? He's just, yeah. Anyway, easily the worst of all of them. To Chilich, me, to, yeah, to, like, to, me, to me, Djokovic actually, uh, and Chilich. Like the the bouncing is a lot worse for me than um, anything mm. you do really with your hands or with whatever. Uh, so, so to me, it's it's either Djokovic or Chilich. Yeah, I've had matches. Oh, sorry, I've had matches of them where I was just like, <laughs> Jesus, just serve already. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but Novak again, it's it's not really much the case frequently. Like, okay, some important points he's like getting ready to soak. But with Zverev, it's every single point. Nadal, of course, also. Um, I mean, Novak, to be fair, since the shot clock has been implemented, he has been a lot quicker than Rafa has been. And Rafa takes his own time. Anyway. Um, yeah, so I think the players should be arriving on court soon. So I'll be heading to the other stream. It was a pleasure as always being uh, sure. uh, being live with both of you, uh, calling various matches. And, um, we got some good chats in as well as always. Very good. Um, yeah, uh, two matches got cut short. One was a complete walkover. The other one was aborted after four ma four games. So there is that. Anyway, we'll see you both soon. Take care. All right. Take care, Shahari. See you on the other side. So, yeah. Um, and thank you so much for your kind words, Davey. Really appreciate it. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about being compared to the uh, the Big Bang Theory. Um, I think... Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a fun comparison. I guess we should take it as a compliment. I'm assuming it, it's, it's, he's coming it's, back. It's the biggest sitcom of the last sort of decade or so. So, yeah, we'll take it. Um, uh, yeah, I guess. I guess so. Yeah. You said... I mean, name name a bigger sitcom from that. Yeah, from that I'm period. trying, and I and I don't know. Like, so probably, like, yeah. you know, it inherited the title from Friends. How I Met Your Mother. That was rivaling it for a while. Yeah, that's comparable. That's comparable. I think I actually haven't watched How I Met Your Mother, but uh, I think uh, sort of I, how I, big it is is probably comparable. I enjoyed How I Met Your Mother more. Just because I prefer the slightly more absurdist humor that it had, um, but I, don't get me wrong, there are a few episodes of The Big Bang Theory I really, really enjoy, and uh, um, Sheldon Cooper is a unique character. But we won't go into which of the talking tennis team is the Sheldon Cooper, um, because uh, that's got a double, double meaning to it. The point, but I'm definitely going to take it as a compliment that we are high, elite quality. Um, elite quality uh content for tennis um at least you know there's a, the big bang theory we're doing something right um and uh davy you are a very very welcome part of our community absolutely brilliant questions you've submitted today and hope to hear from you more um so don't uh i think nurlan doesn't like the attention don't be put Davey. off by don't be put off by nurlan <laughs> don't be put off by nurlan um, Nuran likes to be the star of the chat, but uh, today he has mm -hmm. been sidetracked, maybe in a way. Yeah. I mean, put to the side. Yeah. And absolutely. in the update that everyone is waiting, uh, is waiting for Luke Littler did win over Christopher Latajski. Uh, very <laughs> decent performance from the poll, but the 11 darter to break from Littler at 4 3 was enough. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm a little disappointed, but what can you do? A lot of people are going to lose too. Luke Liedler, and uh, unfortunately, uh, that's going to be the case for the Polish Eagle as well. Damien, I think you're going to have to keep the moustache because it seems to be winning as subscribers. 
I'm not gonna do. I'm, uh, I, I mean, for now I might, uh, but when I'm going with John to Estoril, I'm definitely cutting it off. Like I'm not showing <laughs> up. I'm not showing it up at an event with that thing on my face. However, I did uh, sort of attend a few gatherings already with it. I was fine. No one is like you know shocked or something. A few people have said that it looks fine, and I actually you know don't care about their opinion. Like I know that it looks okay, so I don't mind. Yeah, I, I think have... I might have said something stupid yesterday when I was drunk when I said that. Um, um, well, basically, it, it it's good to be good looking because even with a mustache, you're gonna look fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh I my god. Actually... I don't know if I actually feel like that, but you know, maybe I don't. Uh, given that, um, well, given look, that clearly, um, I said it after alcohol, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> clearly, alcohol has fed into your ego. Um, uh, I, I am. Uh, I feel like uh, this is not something I feel safe commenting on, Damien. Uh, I'm only going to comment on your appearance. Um, That's fine. I don't. <laughs> I don't require that. Not, not at all. <laughs> However, um, when it comes to Ugo Umber and Tadri Kipson, we have Ugo Umber trying to serve up the match now. 5-4, he actually lost the first point already. So let's see if there are any more nerves and chances for Kipson to get back into the match. I suppose, uh, because which match are you even talking about now? Um, because I'm, I'm watching I'm Burrell sure. versus Goff. Goff's just double fault at 30. So it's, uh, it's a really messy game from Goff early in this third set. Because I don't know, uh, I'm, I'm basically asking because I don't know how we should proceed after Umber Kibson is um, over. Uh, it's completely up to you, Damien. I'm happy for you to leave me on my own if you want. If you want to join Strippy and Tom on the other stream, it's also up to you. Um, but I'm I'm focusing on uh, Burrell versus Goff. I know it's not the match we've advertised, but obviously it's a very uh, different situation. Um uh, but yeah, huge volley from Burrell just smacks it right in the court. Just very dangerous volley in many ways because it was really the line. Low percentage shot, but it got her the point. And now she's got a break point opportunity against Coco Goff. It's all happening here. Burrell is upping the aggression, which won her the first set. And suddenly Goff is looking shaky again right now on Stadium One. This might be the on-court story of the tournament, the first big upset of Indian Wells. Goff misses the first serve. Goff is missing the first serve. She's got a second serve opportunity wearing her fluorescent green outfit, serving to the black and white, uh, um, uh, Burrell so wearing black and white, forehand in from Burrell, forehand cross court from Goff, moon ball from Burrell to the Goff forehand, which is just about lands in. With, has enough top spin on it. There's so many loopy forehands on here. It's a battle of the moon balls. Goff lowers the height a little bit, but it's just so high and looping from both players. Now the backhand of Burrell to the backhand of Goff inside out. Just caught, picked up from Burrell, really close to the baseline from Goff. Now they're trading forehands again. Forehand Goff cross court to the forehand of Burrell. Forehand Goff changing direction on the forehand is long. It is way long and Burrell breaks early on in the second set. Now she broke early in the first and won at 6-2. She, won, she broke early in the second. Goff came, won six games in a row, well, five games in a row, actually, and uh, took the second. What's going to happen this time? She's had a 50-50 success rate. Which one of these players is going to close it out? Gibson was actually love, uh, well, fairly love up uh, in that game. He played like his best point of the match, really defending really well out of the corners and then taking over with the forehand down the line. But now it's fairly all. Umber with his 10th ace of the contest. Gibson actually just won. And of course, a big part of this uh, match has been how Umber has managed to sort of handle the fire coming from Gibson's serve. Um, as for the, um, you know, what we were talking about earlier and like how we, how we are going to proceed, I will probably leave you then uh, after this match is done because I also have to do something which will take me like 15, 20 minutes. And after that, I will probably join the, the other stream then. That's fair enough. Well, given that, um, yeah, this there's probably not going to be much more of it. Um, I yeah, think that's exactly. Fair enough. Um, and I know you're not particularly interested in in this uh, in this match. Um, I mean, you know, now that it's in the third set, and like you know, Burel can get a nice win. Why it's, not? It's it's not it's an opportunity for an interesting uh, result. Burel's already thirty love up in this third game of the third set. Um, 
Cam Norrie served for the set, I think, against Sonigo and got broken, but he's a double, but he's still a break up 5 3. Um, I'm just having a look around. Oh, um, might be some drama heading your way in a minute on Stadium 4. So I'll probably do um, a scores roundup after this game. But just to say also, Dario Casacchina is at 5 all in a second set tiebreak, two points away from winning the match. And Bronzetti has match point against Kalanina as well. It's all kicking off in Indian Wells. Yeah, and Umber with a second serve break point down. So um, let's see if he can even keep it in play. This time he actually goes for a much better one. In the first set when he was nervous trying to serve it out, he was just like rolling it in and barely getting it over the net. This one was actually proper and like he, well, I, I wouldn't even say it's an unforced error from Kipson. Most second serve returns that you're not that you're missing are, but I don't think this one was. Very soft serve from uh, Burrell at 30-15. They're into a rally again. Backhand from Goff, cross court. Slice from Burrell into the net, 30 all. Suddenly it's not looking as comfortable for the French woman. Um, just looking around the ground, see if there's anything we need to bring you as an update, but nothing super important, I don't think. Oh, we've had a couple of results coming, I think. Um, which isn't helping because it's all mixed up with yesterday's results. Um, yeah, no, I've, it's all, my scores are all messed up. So I'm gonna have to double check it, and refresh the page. Yeah, some of the matches that are nearing match point have completely disappeared from the Indian Wells Live scores page. So that's not particularly helpful. Um, Cameron Norrie is about to serve for the match at 6-4-5-4. And it's a match point for Ugo Bear. He has Kipson on the move, steps in to, to take his backhand down the line, and I think he might have made it. Yeah, he has. So it's a 6-4-6 for win for Bear. I think, you know, all in all, it has to be perceived as a, as a great showing from him. Uh, just the fact that he's getting into the third round here, maybe not a court that he's going to like love, but we know that sometimes that doesn't matter when you're confident. And he's going to play Tommy Paul or Alex Mickelson next. So it's going to be a great match either way, really. Um, the winner of that could play Djokovic in the fourth round. So it's a very exciting section as well with basically classics uh, all round. I don't know if he will be the favorite over Tommy. Probably no on these courts over Mickelson, probably slightly. But... Um, all in all, definitely uh, not, nothing he can really sort of um, take away that's negative from this showing today. Uh, Kipson still did okay, but was not really that close to, to getting the upset or to getting a set. Perhaps could have applied a bit more pressure in these nervier um, games at 5-4 in both sets, essentially. Okay. So, uh, some missed opportunities for Kipson, but still making... Making an impact. What's his ranking now? Um, around 140, when something like that. Okay, so making continuing steady progress towards the top 100, hopefully for him. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's looking very likely this year, honestly, because if you just look at 2024 points, he would be at like maybe 50, 60, I think, in a word. I'll check it, actually. But um, yeah, it, it does look very likely this year that he will make it a 100 push. Um, currently in the rankings, he is 137. Uh, of course, that might change soon after Phoenix, after the second week of Indian Wells as well. So it's not a guaranteed career high yet, but he probably will get a new career high after Indian Wells. And uh, when it comes to the ATP race, let me check that. He is currently 59th, yeah, 244 points claimed this year already. Um, so basically, uh, he has, let's say, about... 40% of the job done, more or less, when it comes the to the amount of points you does it? to have. Huh? The race doesn't include challenges, does it? It includes challengers. Okay. Maybe it's I'm not thinking... the... Yes, on the WTA, it's, uh, the it's like weirder. I think, yeah, it doesn't include ITF results or something like that, or it includes only some ITF results, maybe. Or, I don't know. There, there was a thing like that. I, I'm not sure if it's actually still true or not, but but definitely on the ATP side, I mean, the race includes every single thing. 
but um yeah th there was something like that on the wta i don't remember exactly but yeah you're right it doesn't yeah the race doesn't include yeah lower lower tournaments i think for because obviously that's what goes towards the wta finals um points um so not that i think it would have a huge impact anyway i think it would have to be someone who kind of goes overnight from one to the other huge forehand from burrell to set up game point I believe in 2018, Kei Nishikori won a challenger and then made the ATP finals, for example. So, you know, it is it is possible. He didn't, I don't think he needed the challenger points as in like he didn't make it by, you know, just... It's like, wasn't, uh, wasn't Nishikori like well within the top 100 in 2018? Um, he, um, he was injured in 2017 at the okay. end and he came back through playing two challengers the first one he actually lost to denis novikov in the opening round and then he beat denis novikov in the opening round of the next event and then won the won the title uh so of course it's not really like the, the only time he's done it now last year he was the first ever unranked challenger winner but um but yeah in 2018 he played both the challenge he played the challenger and made the ATP finals i think there might have been there might have been an example some sometime recently as well of course right now it's going to be like a little happening a bit more often with the 175s and how i would say well i haven't checked that but i would say most of the top 100 will be playing a challenger this year uh i think that's a pretty safe assumption that's going to be over 50 percent so so yeah with the 175s it's kind of um uh, going to be happening a bit more often i would say is indian was super humid asks davy um probably not right i mean it's in the desert literally. no it's dry um, heat it's dry yeah. heat so um, um, uh, hopefully davy you heard the question i know you have to go but it's been great having you in the audience um uh, Jean is also telling us that Bronzetti won, which she did. She managed to break to love to win the match 6-3, 6-4 against Kalanina. Um, Daria Kasakina wins 6-3, 7-6. It was a 7-5 in the tiebreak. And Cameron Norrie has just won 6-4, 6-4 against Sonigo. So some good results for the Brits today. Um, so still some British interest left in Indian Wells. Um, and they'll be back. And Norrie and Radu Khanna will be back on Monday. Um, you're pretty much up to date, other than some live scores around. Dana Schneider is 5-2 up against Zachary in the opening set. Zachary serving. Um, you've got Artifis and Davidoj Fakina warming up. Um, that is on um, being covered on the other stream with Tom and Shuhari and shortly Damien. Um, and uh, Fernandez has got break points to go up a break 3-1 in the second set against Deanne Parry in a, what seems to be a very disrupted match. I don't know what's going on over there. And there's a few other people kind of warming up on court. And, of course, another match that's gone underway that I want to hear Damien's uh, prediction for before he goes. Um, mm -hmm. Zhang Zhezhen against Luca Nardi. Hmm. I mean, should be Zhang. I mean, Nardi hasn't really... Um, like the, the last couple of months, I think he's kind of shown that he's still not really top 100 quality. Like, of course, he had some good challenger runs in the second half of 2023, but he just hasn't had enough to like push over that line. <coughs> Sorry. He's been kind of disappointing to me. Of course, he lost in the qualifying here. Also not an amazing effort, really. Um, all thi uh, everything points to a Zhang win theoretically, but we know that he's not exactly the most... Um, consistent and regular and um you know, sort of um player you can depend on reliable so um i would say that it's definitely possible for nardi to win but um there there is a bit of a quality gap for me there and there's definitely a gap in terms of the you know sheer power and sort of uh how much they can produce on the ball so um let's see it's pretty interesting but i like the the conditions the form the overall quality for Zhang quite a lot actually um of course he he did beat Alexander Kovacevic as well already in this event and uh has a pretty good shot now they would have it would have been Echeverry right I think if uh yeah. no Echeverry what's that yeah, Echeverry if if he didn't withdraw right, yeah. I would say Zhang would also have a very good shot at winning that much Oh. All right, I'll I'll leave you to it then. I see that what's happening, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you speak about consistency. Goff is making some critical mistakes and then Burrell's thread of the needle with a passing shot at the net that Goff just couldn't reach with her racket. Couple of net cords really benefiting 
at Burrell in these last two points. And Burrell now has two points for double break. That passing shot just clipping the tram line. Goff's dad is not looking happy right now. I know you have to go, Damien, but I want to talk about what's happening right here. Backhand in play from Burrell. Drop shot from Goff. Burrell's just about going to reach it. Goff goes for the lob. Burrell just picks it off. The lob was not good enough. It just drops pretty much onto Burrell's racket and Burrell leads four games to love in this deciding set. So Damien's off, but those of you who want to stick with me to see if this upset is going to happen, please do. Well, for love, uh, it's very likely that it will happen. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll see you guys on the other stream in like 20 minutes or something. The stream will already be going uh, if you want to watch it uh, instead. But, you know, stay with Nick for the Burel Goff uh, finish probably since it's probably not far off. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be there in like 20, 25, 30 minutes. Uh, see ya. All right. See you, Damien. Thanks for coming on. And then there was one, but not just one, because I know that I've got a few viewers here with you. I you know there's about 70 of you from YouTube and one from Twitch. You are all very, very welcome. And quite a few of you from um, Twitter as well. Lovely to see you all. Sean, if you're still in the chat, please keep me company. Um, Nolan, if you're still in the chat, throw questions at me. Um, Ghosty, I hope you're out there somewhere. Um, but uh, this is a big moment that we need to discuss. Burrell's just gone long with a cross-court backhand, and it's Love 30 Goff who's going to try and get this comeback underway. She managed to win five games in a row um, in the last set. She's going to need to do something similar to get herself back in this match. Burrell, Love 30, black cap with the white and black, with the sort of interesting Adidas dress, sort of black front and back, but with white sides. Uh, facing down Goff, who's in um, the fluorescent um, new, new Bounce kit. New Bounce kit as it's a double fault from Burrell and suddenly it's Love 40 and it's gone off the rails a little bit for the French woman, has to be said. Um, but yeah, even though like you're all listening to me, let me, uh, you know, you are the commentator just as much as I am. Hopefully um, I am keeping you up to date with what's happening in this Goff match if you can't watch um, backhand from Goff cross court to the backhand of Burrell into the net. Goff breaks, got one of the breaks back 4 1, and she's looking determined as she walks back to her chair. Coco Goff obviously was going into um, the the event as one of the favourites, definitely in my book. I, I, I was thinking if Sviontek didn't win it, Goff was the second favourite in my book. Um, I'm surprised that Goff hasn't done better at Indian Wells in her career, to be honest. Um, definitely been up and down so far this season. Goff started off really, really well with uh, winning the title in Auckland um, before uh, then uh, going on to win uh, in... Um, uh, before going on to get to the semi-finals in Australian Open. Scrapped her way there to an extent that Kostyuk match was a battle in the quarters. Then surprised lost to Siniakova in Doha, first round. Bit better in Dubai, beat Pliskova in a tough match in the last 16, but then lost the very, very in form Anna Kalinskaya in the uh, uh, Anna Kalinskaya in round um, what would it be? Uh, in uh, the quarterfinals, and then Kalinskaya obviously went on to beat Sviontek and almost win the finals. So that wasn't a bad loss. Um, but yeah, so far seems to be veering from decent run to um, surprise early loss. But let's see. This match is not over yet. <laughs> Just checking something else. Um, yeah, let's see what's going on um, around the grounds and keep you up to date with everything. Uh, tennis related at the minute. Um, stay with me if you really want. Sakari, uh, um, it got that game um, earlier, and Schneider is serving uh, five three to try and take this first set against the Greek. Um, Shang and Nadi is going with serve on Stadium five. Uh, Feast Davidovich Shakina, I'm not going to give you an update because you can follow that on the other stream if you want. Um, and Fernandez is a breakup against Diane Parry in this second set on Stadium 6. It's currently 7-5. Parry first set, 3-2. Fernandez second set. 
and a bunch of other matches warming up. We've got Wong versus Mertens, Garcia versus Tomova, and Muller versus Dimitrov all warming up. Goff so far looking confident, com- comfortable in this game with a great backhand volley that um, is then followed up with a very, very strong forehand volley winner for 30 love. This is going to get followed up with another really, really good point from the American um, who goes cross court with the forehand, the forehand of Burrell, forehand up the line from Goff, Burrell backhand into the net, fails to win the point. It's 40 love on my screen. I appreciate I'm a little behind uh, scoreboard, but I will be able to tell you exactly what is going on. Obviously, feel free to throw um, opinions in. I know Jean asked, what's Coco up to? I think it's I think she's dealing with Burrell having a very, very good day. Uh, she's been definitely a little bit scrappy in making some unforced errors. Um, but I don't think she's doing a whole lot wrong. I just think Burrell is really competing very well today, as evidenced by that huge forehand winner that not even Coco Goff, with her immense defence, can put up with. Can't even get a racket on it. Goff is one of the fastest movers in the world. But the trajectory of that ball was just too fast for her to even get a racket on. That's 40-15. First serve into the net from Coco Goff. What's going to happen on the second serve in Indian Wells? This is probably going to be the biggest upset of the tournament, other than um, obviously Rabakina pulling out yesterday. Back up the line from Goff. Forehand cross court from Burrell. Goff, forehand into the net. It, she was trying to go up the line, but she was being pushed back by the depth of Burrell's shot. It was difficult to pull off, but maybe she could have something go, gone for a little bit, something that's high percentage, maybe go cross court. Another opportunity for Goff to close out this game and keep the gap to Burrell to one break and maybe put some pressure on the French woman's serve. First serve into the net from Goff. Needs to be doing better on some of these... Uh, these stats, maybe it's worth having a look and seeing how those stats are looking at the, at the moment, sort of between games. As Goff goes middle of the box and the return from Burrell is long. So Goff holds for for 2 4. Let's have a look at these stats. So, yeah, Goff's first serve percentage is still 69%. It's not terrible. It's better than Burrell's, but it's the second serve point when it's really hurting Goff at the minute. Only 25%. Burrell is obviously. Um, Broken Goff um, six time uh, six times, and Goff has broken Burrell four times. It's been a definitely been a messy match, really close in terms of points, which you would expect. Uh, but at the minute, the edge is with the French woman. But will it stay that way? Fantastic slice from Burrell to the Goff backhand. Backhand Burrell up the middle of the court. Goff keeping it in the middle of the court with her backhand. Cross court from Burrell looping the forehand again. Going back to Goff's forehand. Cross court from Goff, huge cross court forehand from Burrell that has Goff slipping over and falling on her knees trying to get to it. That was just too good. And the Burrell forehand, when she tees it off, is a massive weapon. See a replay of Goff losing her balance, trying to go back because um, Burrell was going back behind her with the huge shot. No damage done by the look of it, thankfully, for Goff. Burrell serves up the tee. Backhand and play from Goff. Forehand, Burrell up the line. Goff gets her forehand into play. Backhand, Burrell back towards the Goff forehand, which is really, really short. Burrell drop shots. Goff's going to run it down. Scoops the forehand over. Backhand passing shot winner from Burrell. That's so good from the French woman. And it's 30 love. I think the only upset that could probably match this would be if one of the top four on the men's side goes out. But even then, contextually, like, is it going to be that much of a surprise if Daniel Medvedev loses? Probably about the same sort of level. It would be more of a shock if Alcaraz or Sinner or Djokovic lost. Back forehand in play from Burrell. Goff forehand looped up. Forehand Burrell right at Goff's forehand, which goes cross court. Burrell's looping that one up. Goff's got time on this forehand, comes in behind it. Backhand Burrell. Goff picks off with her backhand volley. Lob from Burrell. Overhead from Goff. Winner. The lob wasn't good. Lob was high from Burrell, but it was travelling far enough and Goff could get back behind it and put away the overhead. 30-15. So it's probably worth checking out the uh, order of play. By the way, Jessica Pagula and Anna Blinkova are warming up on um, Stadium 2. Sakari has broken back in the first set and is going to be serving um, at 4-5. 
um, in the next service game. Parry is also broken back against Fernandez um, in their match. So that one's a real contest. Another good day to be French with Parry competing with Fernandez. Garcia, another French woman underway against Tomova. Um, less of a um, that's a good result for Osan Dodan, although she did compete with Kasakina. Burrell's at 40-15, by the way. But so, yeah, all the French players scheduled at the same time, probably a bit of a nightmare for uh, who, whoever the French broadcaster is that has got this event. Double fault from Burrell to give Goff, keep Goff in this game, 40-30. Um, speaking of the big players, obviously Novak Djokovic is playing on um, Stadium 1 later against uh, Vukic. Um, and then Medvedev will be the last match on Stadium 1, um, not before 8pm specific sta Pacific Standard Time. Um, another first serve into the net from Diane Parry. Definitely going to be trying to bring you all the updates as much as we possibly can. Another serve from Parry. Backhand Goff short. Slice from uh, from Burrell. Forehand up the line from Goff. Backhand cross court from Burrell. Goff goes back behind with her backhand. Another slice from Burrell. Then another slice up the line. So much slicing from the French. They're so good at creating slices. That backhand wasn't sliced. She was going for a big one up the line. And it ends up in the top of the net. Too flat. Goff has got this game back to juice. There is hope yet. There is hope yet for Goff to get back into this match. She's only one breakdown. She was four love down, don't forget. Juice. Clara Burrell serves out wide. Goff scrambles that. Uh, it tries to get that in, but it's a uh, too good a serve from Burrell. Unreturnable, and it's an advantage for Clara. Clara Burrell, who... I need to have a look. Like, what's her... Uh... Obviously, she's a name I've seen in the mix for a while. Um, she's 22 years old. Been watching her kind of come through. Um, is currently at a career high. She's now top 50. Huge inside-out forehand from Burrell, who then goes cross-court with the forehand this time. Backhand just moving Goff from side to side of the minute. Back forehand from Burrell. Mid-court, up at shoulder height is too good. It's a winner. So many winners from Burrell right now. And she is through. Um, obviously, best Grand Slam result from Burrell. She's reached the third round of a slam four times. Once at Australian Open this year. Once at the French Open in 2020. And twice at the US Open in the last two years. Um, she has been a runner-up twice in, a WTA, uh, in WTA finals. Both 250s. Both on clay. Two very established um, clay members. But obviously, she's had, and she's had one previous top 10 win. And I knew I'd recognise her from somewhere. She was the French player who took out Jessica Bagula at the Australian Open this year. So she's definitely coming for the top American girls at the minute, Clara Burrell. Uh, the changing ends at the minute. So there's not a lot of action on court right now as we wait. Um, Schneider had opportunities there. She's at Juice on the Sakari serve to try and claim this first set. Nardi is 5-1 up against Zhang, so I'm going against Damien's prediction at the minute. Fernandez has broken parry again. It's 4-3 in the second set to try and even this one out. Garcia's already an early breakup. That's everything sort of from around the grounds so far in this Indian Wells day session and these opening matches. We hope you're enjoying spending your Saturday um, afternoon, Saturday evening with us. Um, if you are enjoying this, please hit subscribe, give us a like. Um, lovely to have you along for the ride. It's been great welcoming Davey earlier. Yeah, but we're going to keep bringing this. Can Coco Goff keep herself in this tournament? She's serving for it. First serve is very long. Come to one o'clock in the afternoon in Indian Wells. It's nine o'clock in the evening in the UK, where I am. Forehand, huge forehand return on the second serve from Burrell. And it's a winner. It's another winner for Clara Burrell. Let's have a look. I've got to look at this win account. I don't think it's being included on TNNS. Um, no, it's not. We're not getting... Um, win accounts unfortunately which is a shame but i think it must be pretty high i'm gonna to have to look at the stats after the match 
um, I'm not showing the score. I'm showing um, something else. As uh, So, yeah, we'll get the score back up for you um, as it's 15 all. Great point from Goff there as uh, she puts away a forehand from midcourt, um, followed up with a backhand volley, that uh, a couple of volleys, and that drop volley sort of on the defence was good enough to keep Burrell at bay and she went and she's um there inside out uh return from uh cross court return even from Burrell is wide and it's 30 15 good serving from Goff there I hope that you are enjoying the stream um just keeping up to date with all things Coco Goff I appreciate it says Emma Raducanu that's what we were watching earlier Emma threw um after the retirement of Diana Ostremska forehand looped up from Burrell. Again, find up the line from Goff. Forehand cross court from Goff to the forehand of Burrell. Goff picks that. He's going to drop volley again. Burrell going to pick it off. Again, more net play from Goff. That was a good lob from Goff. Maybe Burrell shouldn't have left it. And it's 40-15. Goff is trying to employ a lot more net play. And there it becomes very different because her defense skills of the net are actually pretty good. That doubles experience really coming in useful. Goff serves T backhand in play from Burrell inside out back uh, find out the line from Goff and the backhand cross courts into the net from Burrell and Goff holds right can Burrell close this one out this is going to be a nervy time this will be the biggest win of Burrell's career she's already had that with beating Pagura in Australia but Goff with her current status as a Grand Slam champion and her higher ranking in her home ground of the USA which by the way Goff has not lost a match in the US since Miami last year. It has been almost 12 months since Coco Goff lost a match on American soil. Is Burrell going to end that streak? Bearing in mind, Goff won the title in Washington last year. Then she won the title in Cincinnati. And then she won the US Open title very memorably in the late summer of 2023. Burrell going for the forehand up the line, but puts it wide into the tram lines. Just sort of wipes the sweat from her face. Goes into a serve motion, but is going to have to give Goff a second serve. Second serve coming in. Bok in mid midcourt. Oh, huge forehand return from Goff. Really deep. And it's 30 love. That was a really, really good return. Just picks it off. Kicks past Burrell and it's 30 and it's love 30 and Goff suddenly two points away from getting this match back on track for her. Lots going on around the grounds, by the way, which I will bring you f first serve into the net from Burrell. I will not be updating you on Feast versus Davidovich for Kina. You can go over to the other street for that if you're interested in that one. But forehand return from Goff is again too good on the cross court. Again, second serve from Burrell is easily picked off by Goff on the forehand and it's love 40 and she's really swinging through that forehand now is the American and she's got three break points. Burrell's not even getting a sniff of closing this match out right now. It's love 40 and the front and Burrell serves, gets that first serve in, forehand cross court, forehand Goff up the line, backhand Burrell to the forehand of Goff up the line and it's a scrambled forehand on the run from Burrell that ends up in the net. Goff fist pumps. She's back in this. We're back on serve. And Goff's Indian Wells is not over. Not yet. Five for Burrell. Uh, five for Burrell. But Goff will be coming out to serve once again to stay in this tournament. Diana Schneider is just broken. She will be serving for the first set against Zachary at 6-5. Luca Nardi is going to be serving for the first against uh, Zhang Zhizhen. Um, Fe Fernandez is going to be serving for the first set against Diane Parry. Second set, um, sorry, against Diane Parry. So that would be to take that one into a decider. That's probably the match that I'm going to turn on after this stream. Albeit Schneider versus Zachary also looks interesting. But I am a Leila Fernandez fan and I also am a fan of Diane Parry. So I'm probably going to be seeing how that one plays out. It's been a real battle over on Stadium 6, almost two hours on court. And this one's um, only getting three minutes longer. This has been an hour and 55 minutes. We're five minutes away from a two-hour battle between Clara Burrell and Coco Goff. Don't go anywhere. 
this is where we watch um, the big results in women's tennis. Are you enjoying the match? Um, I, is my commentary being helpful? Let us know. Love to get some feedback live on the stream. Lovely to see another subscriber. Thank you so much to whoever that was. Um, we will be bring. We are currently bringing lots of press conference footage, and we've got um, Anastasia has got a press pass. She is representing us at Indian Wells, and she's been bringing us all the audio uh, from the press conferences with all the players, um, including Andy Murray, Iga Swiatek, Elena Rabakina, uh, Novak Djokovic, Lo Daniel Medvedev. All really great players as. Goff's forehand up the line um, goes long and she's clutching her head. Love 15. More of a... I don't think she's got a headache. I think she's just frustrated. Burrell, once, Burrell is now three points away from this title as she was in the last Goff service game. But that was an unreturnable serve from Goff, a wicked kick on it, and it's 15 all. The American, the US Open champion, looking to show her champion qualities right now. Coco Goff serves out wide, forehand wide from Burrell. The return just had a little bit too much on it, and it's 30 15. And Burrell's now the one who's looking a little frustrated. Trying to keep a um trying to keep a straight face, trying to trying to keep that poker face, not letting on how she's feeling, but she must be frust she must be frustrated she hasn't been able to close this out first serve is just about on the line from goff and then backhand up the line to the forehand of burrell forehand goff up the line just drops in backhand from burrell lots of spin on these uh, shots backhand from burrell really accelerated through but she's missed it and it's 40 15. she's definitely looking frustrated with that one that was an opportunity there but those shots that she was hitting big on before they were going in, in the last few sets. They weren't, they, ha they aren't now. Go, go, Goff. Goes out wide with the first serve. Runs in to pick off the short return. Burrell tries to go for the passing shot and Goff can't control it. That passing shot attempt was too good. And the volley from Goff is way out of court. And it's 40-30. 40-30. So the first game point's been saved. That was a good bit of game from uh, Burrell dealing with Goff, trying to pick her off um, from the short return. Let's see how she deals with this situation. By the way, it's two match point, the two set points for Dana Schneider on Stadium 3 as Sakari is serving. Backhand from uh, Burrell is into the net. Goff holds its five all on Stadium 1. Alexandre Muller's already a break up on Grigor Dimitrov. Early break. That's interesting. Fernandez is serving for the first set, the sorry, second set now. Um, on Stadium 6. The the fact that the serve doesn't change over until after the changeover is really confusing things for me when trying to follow these other live scores. Lise Mertz has four love up already in against uh, Wong, against Wong um, and uh, Karen Garcia's got points potential for double break against uh, Tomova. Five points all. Uh, five games all here on Stadium 1. Backhand from Burrell. To the backhand of Goff. Cro Burrell loops up her backhand. Goff loops the forehand kind of hits the service line. Both That ball's are hitting the service line at the minute. Goff goes a bit deeper with that back forehand and then moving Burrell from side to side with the forehand. Burrell goes back behind Goff to the forehand with the backhand. Backhand cross-court from Burrell. Backhand cross-court Goff. Again, short slice from Burrell. Goff counter slices. Forehand Burrell is going to come in behind it. Now she's got the net. Drop shot from Burrell. Goff's going to come in behind. Oh, that's a great improvised backhand volley. Double-handed from Burrell. And that's a winner. 15 love and she exhales and she's trying to keep an even keel here. That was a very tight point. Could have gone either way. Could have gone either way. And Clara Burrell is looking very good there. Very well handled double hander on the volley. Now she goes long trying to get the tee with the first serve. What are we going to bring to the table for Clara Burrell? who lollops the second serve in, but it gets in, pushes Goff back on the backhand. Now slices. Goff has to come in because it's really, really short slice. Backhand, passing shot up the line. Winner. 
from Clara Burrell, who had Goff scrambling in defence at the net. And it's 30 love. This is a really good service game so far from Clara Burrell with the pressure back on her a little bit, having had a 5-2 lead. Don't forget. Goff has picked her back to 5 all. 5-2. Goff, 5-4. Goff held. Broke. Yeah, it was... Um, pretty sure it was a 5-2 lead. Forehand from Goff up the line. Then we've got backhand from Goff. Scrambled for a really deep backhand from Clara Burrell. Can't do anything about that. Again, pushing Goff back. 40 love. And this is really interesting from... The kind of the match tactics here is that Burrell knows that Goff has got really good defence, but hitting the ball right at her feet with pace. Goff isn't moving to the side. She's being pushed back, and that's not ideal to try and pull off the shot. Forehand cross-court from Burrell. Goff, again, forehand, kind of mid-level. Backhand up the line from Goff. Scram scrambled back by Burrell. Backhand from Goff cross-court, running, moving Burrell around. Goff's going to come in to finish with an overhead at the net. 40-15, very positive point from the American there. Crowd loving it. Someone's managed to pick up one of the tennis balls there. Backhand inside out from Goff. It was showing the replay there of the points. We're hoping you're enjoying life. Um, are we enjoying this with us? Stay here if you want to know what's happening with Coco Goff and you can't watch, or you prefer our commentary, my commentary over whatever else is going on. Forehand from Goff on the return. Backhand from uh, Burrell midcourt. Then we've got Burrell looping up the forehand. Huge backhand from Goff. Trying to put pressure on, uh, on Burrell, which she does. And Burrell's ended up in the net with her backhand. She's being applauded on by her coach. Another female coach, which is always good to see on the WTA Tour. We need more of those. Clara Burrell is getting ready to serve. Forehand from Goff to the forehand of Burrell. Forehand from Goff inside out. Backhand Burrell looped up. Forehand Bur Goff to the forehand of Burrell. Forehand Goff into the net. She was trying to go cross court with that, but it ended up not having enough on it. It was all spin and no pace. And Burrell walks back to the changeover. 6-5 up in this set. Goff is going to be serving to stay in this match again. If she wins this game, we're into a deciding tie break. It's all very, very tight here in Indian Wells. What's happening around the ground? Well, we've still got Pugula and Blinkova warming up. Diana Schneider secured the first set against Maria Sakkari, 7-5. Muller is still a break up against Grigor Dimitrov. Luka Nardi secured the first set against Shang Shizhen. And we're back to five all between Diane Parry and Leila Fernandez. This is looking like a real battle going on in Stadium 6. Um, still going with serve between Fies and Davidovich Fikina. Uh, Mertens is five love up against Wong, who's now serving to try and avoid the bagel in that set. And Caroline Garcia has taken the first set against Victoria Tolliva, 6-1. You are now up to date with everything that's happening in Indian Wells right now. Obviously, earlier results. Uh, we were originally going to be bringing you Holger Runa versus Minos Raonic. Ended up being our walkover for the Danish player, as Minos Raonic was too injured to take to the court. Then Emma Raducanu, um, we brought you Emma Raducanu against Diana Jastrzemska, but Raducanu ended up um, winning by the benefit of Jastrzemska retiring, having experienced some kind of abdominal cramps um, whilst four love down to the Brit. Raducanu will now play Arena Sabalenka in the next round. Uh, other results, um, a great day for the Brits as Cameron Norrie was through in straight sense against it, Lorenzo Sonigo. We also brought you updates of Hugo Umber beating Patrick Kipson and Adrian Manorino beating Thomas Mashak. Uh, Lucia Bronzetti and um, Daria Kasatkina also through. Now what's going to happen? Are we going to get a winner here, right here, right now? As um, Leila Fernandez has now broken, has Leila Fernandez broken again? I think Leila Fernandez has broken again, but we'll, we'll have to see. Um, no, I think she's held serve in Stadium 6. I'll check back in on that in a minute because the serving score isn't particularly 
reliable, but we we should be focusing on the the actual tennis action on this Coco Goff match. Goff has got a second serve here at fifteen love. Burrell goes for the forehand. Goff gives a moon ball forehand. Burrell goes inside out and kind of falls into the net. Burrell then does a drop volley. Goff let cord right over Burrell's head. Very fortunate to win that point. 30 love to Goff. We're two points away from a deciding tie break. The pressure is definitely on both players right now. Yeah, very fortunate. Goff's backhand volley hits the right, hits the middle of the net kicks up over the head of Clara Burrell on the replay. First serve from Goff is long. We've got a second serve coming up for the American here. Maybe some kind of graphic glitch or some kind of light that keeps flashing on the court. Forehand from Burrell, really aggressive. Causes Goff to scrabble. Burrell's got a really, really short return to try and pick off. Goff tries to go for the lob, but Burrell's got the overhead this time. And it's 30-15, it's and that's very positive play from the French player. There's definitely a blinking um, floodlight or something that's kind of flashing on the court. It's quite distracting. Um, I don't think there's a graphic design. I think there's some kind of uh, yeah floodlight um, for the night session that's just flashing at the minute. It's being picked up by the TV cameras. It doesn't seem to be bothering Goff, who'd be serving into it. Um, especially from the side that she's on right now. 30-15, and it seems to fix the problem now. Um, forehand in play from Burrell. Short, Goff's going to come in behind it. Burrell puts the backhand into the net, forehand into the net even, and it's 40-15 for Goff. And she's got two game points to put it into a deciding tie break. Remember, unlike at the slams, this is going to be first to seven, not first to ten. Uh, for those of you just joining, um, obviously Emma Raducanu is uh, not playing. Um, she has just won her match. She beat um, Yastremska by virtue of retirement of the Ukrainian. But I'm just going to bring you the Goff match. Forehand from Burrell is huge. Goff manages to somehow get that back in and it's neutralised the rally. Forehand from Goff up the line. Backhand is way long from Burrell. We have a tie break, people. We have a tie break. On Stadium One. Very quickly, Leila Fernandez is two points away from taking it to a siding uh, set on Stadium Six against another French woman, Diane Parry. It's five six. Uh, who is serving at five six? That's where the other drama is right now. But anyway, we're into a tie break. All of our focus is going to be here on Stadium One. It's the first service into the net from Clara Burrell. Bounces the ball, lifts it up, serves. Really short second serve. Goff goes for the forehand return, then goes for the backhand, really putting Burrell under pressure. Really short ball. Forehand from Goff is going to come in behind it and then picks up a forehand volley, wins the point, and it's 1-0 Goff. Great start for the American in this tie break. And now she's got two serves. Really positive point from Goff going on the front foot here, trying to keep it aggressive. Her Indian Wells may not be done. It looked it looked dangerous. She looked like she might be on the ropes at four love down in the set. And suddenly now she has got a very, very slim advantage in this third set. Very the slimmest of slim margins give us a tie break. Really short return from Burrell. The Goff just runs in and picks off with the backhand up the line right in the corner to love. 2-0, I should say, in this tie break, but it, this is tennis. Love means nothing. So here we go. Coco Goff is now serving at 2-0. Got a bit of a cushion behind him now. Goes for the fo forehand right in the corner from Burrell. And that and Goff doesn't even get that return over the net because that forehand from Burrell was so in the corner. Goff had to really scramble it. And again, it was all spin and ended up landing on Goff's side of the net. And, and that mini break advantage has been erased. Burrell is now serving at 1-2. And that slimmest of margins has become even slimmer for Coco Goff. Clara Burrell serves at the tee. Goff manages to scramble that return into play. Looped moon ball from um, Burrell. Another moon ball from the French woman. Mid-court. Forehand Goff again in play. 
Burrell goes for the drop shot. Goff's going to pick it off. Burrell's going to scramble that one up. Goff has the overhead. Burrell gets a backhand onto it, tries to lob Goff, but it goes over the baseline and the mini break advantage is restored for Goff 3-1. Maybe there was an opportunity there, but Burrell was very much on the defence in that point. And Goff has definitely feels like it's she shifted the momentum. And it's what you expect from one of the top players on the WTA Tour right now. She is one of the top four. She has separated herself from the pack, along with Iga Sviantek, Irina Sabalenka and Elena Rabakina. Forehand from the American. Backhand up the line from Burrell is long. It's another missed backhand and it's 4-1 Goff who now has a double mini break advantage. 4-1. But this could still go either way. Goff's now stepping up to serve. Excuse me. Goes out wide. Drop return. Really short. Goff doesn't pick it off, though. That was really odd from it. She tried to run into behind that really short return to pick it off and miss hit. I'm not sure. But again, that was mostly spin on that forehand. And it ends up being 4-2 for Goff. Burrell is, Burrell's managed to close the gap just a little bit. Brad Gilbert's got his head down. He's not looking, but he's still applauding, still trying to encourage his player. He's wearing all black. He must be roasting in this desert sun. I know it's March, but it's still pretty warm out there. Coco Goff's now stepping up to the baseline to serve, to try and maintain this advantage in the, that she has in this tyre break. The crowd are very much engaged right now. Burrell's getting ready to receive. Coco Goff serves out wide. Forehand looped in from Burrell, really short. Goff's going to attack with her forehand. Now she's at the net, goes for the overhead, finishes it cross court. 5 2, two points away from the match. Coco Goff. Clara Burrell, what can you do to keep the pressure on the American? What can you do? We are into a deciding set, by the way, on uh, Stadium Six as Fernandez takes the second set, 7 5. It's very, very evenly matched between her and Deanne Parry right now. First serve is wide from Clara Burrell, trying to go up the tee. Is she going to bring any success for the French today? Is she, it's a good day to be French watching all these players. Backhand, cross court in play from Goff. Backhand, Burrell in play. Forehand again, going back behind Goff, keep putting on the defence. Now Burrell's coming to the net. Goff's going to pick that one up. And Burrell's volley you know, was very much defensive. It wasn't good enough. It wasn't controlled. And it's 6-2 Goff and she's got four match points. Burrell's being encouraged on by her box. But it's not looking good for the French woman who did surf the match at 5-4. No, 5-3. Surfing the match at 5-3. Serve out wide from Clara Burrell. Too wide. 6-2. Burrell serves. Backhand in play from Goff. So the backhand of Burrell cross court. That's a winner. It's 6-3 to Goff. What a way to save your first match point. Wonderful cross court winner from Burrell. She's not out of this yet. Clara Burrell is not out of this yet. By any means. <laughs> Goff is going to get ready to serve. She's got two serves to try and put this one away now. Serves. Goes, tries to go up the tee, but it's long. It's long over the base, it's long over the service line. Baseline would be a terrible serve. Lifts it up. Short second serve. Burrell's got the forehand into play. Looped forehand from Goff near the service line. And Goff, again, that's all spin and no pace into the middle of the net. 6-4. Another match point saved by Burrell. Goff, very tight in that point. She's got another match point on her serve. She's going to want to get this one because otherwise the next one is on Burrell's. Coco Goff steps up. She's going to get ready to try and put this one away again. Third match point in the 6-4 in this tie break. Serves out wide. Burrell's got that forehand into play. Forehand Goff up the line. 
backhand from Burrell mid-court, back forehand Goff. It was a really deep ball from um, Burrell, but now they're sort of touching the service line at the minute. Lots of loop and spin on these balls. Cross-court from Goff. Burrell runs it down, goes cross-court again. Goff's moving her from side to side, backhand up the line from Burrell. Forehand Goff, really short. Burrell forehand, pushes Goff back. We managed to get the forehand in play. Now Burrell goes on the attack, for pushing Goff back again, really bludgeoning her with this forehand. Goff still retrieving it with these short balls. Cross-court forehand from Burrell. Goff still retrieving it, still retrieving everything Burrell's throwing at her. Backhand cross-court is wide, and Goff roars to her box. That was a tough point for her. Burrell kept on peppering her and peppering her, but the defence was just too good. And then when Burrell pulled the trigger, it misfired, and Coco Goff survives a scare in Indian Wells, and she is through to the next round. What a result for Coco Goff. What a comeback. She's still in this tournament. Write her off at your peril. Write her off at your peril. Um, I'm just going to have a look and see who she's playing in the next round, because it depends. I don't know if we know that yet. I mean, we've only had a few results so far. It was a really, really good uh, result for her. Um, just to say, looking around the grounds in case anyone's interested, still a big battle going on between um, Schneider and Sakari. Parry and Fernandez are having a break before the third set. Um, and Mertens has just taken the first against Wong 6 1. Uh, Zhang is making it competitive on Stadium 5. Um, and another competitive match that's going on. Um, Arthur Fies has just won the first set 6 3 against Alejandro Davidovich Fakina, which is on the other side. I'm just going to check the draw to see. Um, who Goff's potential opponent is before I sign off and let you go and join Tom, Damien and uh, Shrihari. Uh, so let's have a look. Goff. Yeah, so Goff um, is playing Bronzetti in the next round, who beat Kalina earlier in straight sets. Um, could be an interesting one. Bronzetti doesn't have a lot of pace. It's going to be very much be a battle of uh, the defence. Um, it should be interesting. Um, and obviously, I'm talking about Emma Raducanu making it through earlier, which is the match we originally started with. Beat uh, Diana Stramska for love on a retirement. Um, it's not actually guaranteed she's playing Arena Sabalenka because Arena Sabalenka is playing later and she's got to get through Peyton Stearns, who's not going to be a walkover. Um, it's not going to be a pushover anyway. Goff's having her on court interview right now. Um, really good result from the American. I mean, um, Burrell definitely had her on the back foot a lot with the power that she was producing. Maybe Goff could have been um, a little bit better today, but um, her skilled defence has kept her in the point. Uh, kept her in the points. And uh, yeah, um, wasn't always hitting through her forehand, but she doesn't always need to. Um, got the job done today. And that's all that's needed from Coco Goff. Right. And that's all that's needed from me as well. So thanks everyone who's joined us for the last couple of hours. Um, it's been really lovely um, spending some time with you all. Um, thanks for those of you who've stuck with me the whole time, maybe joined us for the Coco Goff match. Um, if you want more Talking Tennis coverage, we have another live stream on the go right now um, to watch after feast against Alejandro Davidovich Fikina. Um, and I'll be back at some point on the channel to take you through another match at this amazing Indian Wells tournament so far. Um, but until then, all of you take care and keep talking tennis. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.